propaganda. Have you and, guys ever yeah. gone on phases where you try to go kind of lower protein just yeah. to see how your body responds mm -hmm. and yep. feels? Like it's that? good to step away for a bit. I I, mean, I, I feel good when I go low protein for a day, but I'm also going low calorie for a day, so it's almost like fasting. So, so that's the same. same that's my yeah. only. So I've done it before, where it's like that a day, a couple days, or like that, and then I've done it for extended periods of time. And what I find, if I start stringing consecutive days together. Uh, my body just pairs down muscle totally. fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I am, I will, I, I'll lose weight, but I'll lose muscle as fast as I am yeah. losing body fat. Um, when I do not hit my protein intake consistently, but having a day where I take a complete break, a fast type of day, or just a really low calorie, low protein type of day, I feel phenomenal from that. I noticed that. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think that has more to do with just taking a break, mm -hmm. you know, cause yeah. if it was, if it wasn't, if it was a low protein, high calorie day, I think I'd feel like crap. You know what I mean? I, I, same thing, Adam, if I go low protein for two, for, you know, three, four, five days in a row, I start to not feel so good. I can, de well, I can definitely tell in my muscle, um, and in my energy. Protein, uh, it's as close as you can get to a magical macronutrient. Uh, they just did another study that showed that a low calorie diet, yes, it does cause fat loss, but if the low calorie diet is high in protein, you get better health outcomes, more fat loss, you keep more muscle. You got better satiety. Blood lipids even look better. It's another study showing that protein makes a very big difference. Are you telling me the bros were right again? I'm telling. Well, the bros are <laughs> crazy. Bros, yeah. Gym bros. Gym bros. No, so check this out. Check out the study. Right. You're so, so bad though. I think you like literally. Have, I think we've titled an episode like "Protein is not the magical supplement." Yeah. Thing. Well, you know what? <laughs> macronutrient. I mean, <laughs> people can overdo it, can't, can't they? <laughs> check out the study. Right. So this was a study. Oh. Uh, the title of it was "Relatively High Protein or Low Carb Energy Restricted Diets for Body Weight Loss and Body Weight Maintenance." So this is the. I'll read the abstract to you. Low carb diets have been suggested to be effective in body weight management. However, these diets are relatively high in protein as well. So the objective was to unravel whether body weight loss and weight maintenance depends on the high protein or the low carb component of the diet. So they literally took two low carb diets. Yeah, but isn't that kind of obvious, right? If it's if it's if holding on to holding on to muscle is more related to lower carb or or to higher protein. No, no. So so I'll, I'll, let me break it down. Right. Yeah, so that, they that sounded, that sounded confusing to me. They found they followed people for a year, um, who both in both groups followed a lower a low carb low calorie diet, but the difference was one group had more protein in their diet and the other group had less protein, okay. so they had more fat. Right. So the difference was the protein. They're okay. all low ca calorie, all low carb. And what they found was that the higher protein intake resulted in better outcomes and mm. across the board. More weight loss, more fat loss, uh, better now, uh, HDL, mm. uh, lip blood lipid, you know, triglycerides look better. Like it was just, it was healthier and better for aesthetic goals. Is well, this related somewhat to, to what, um, I forget her name that we had on the podcast talking about like blood sugar, um, consistent levels. Oh, Kelly. And, Kelly, yeah. Could be because also part of that study, they showed that the insulin response was better in the high protein. So group. what were the controls on the protein, right? Oh, you said you said just low and then high protein So what or, or higher protein. So what was mm. it? Was was one group under their RDA or they uh, above it and then one group was way <laughs> above it? Like, Because that matters, right? Because if if one group is, is grossly under eating protein mm. and the other one is just eating adequate protein or, I mean, that's pretty obvious to me, right? Yeah. Um, that's It'd a good question. It would be different. I, th I think it would be more compelling of a study if both groups had at least adequate protein, but one group had higher by say 20% or something like that. Well, here's what it is. It was 15% uh, of the calories from, from protein versus 30%. Oh, okay. Of the okay. calories coming from protein. Okay. So double. Yeah, both are in deficits though. So that's Both important. in deficits, both low carb. Okay. But the high protein group did better. Better. In mm. all, in almost every, ma I mean, every metrics, there was uh, emotional eating. They did better. Hunger score, they did better. HDL, they had a larger rise, a much bigger reduction in triglycerides. Insulin response was better. Body fat percentage went down more, and weight went down more from the from the high protein group. Mm. So it just it just it's just better across the board. Now, of course, there's always individual variances, but so, this really does highlight that um, that protein is something you should aim for, especially if your calories are low. If you were comparing this like as if they were two diets, you would use the ketogenic diet, and then what other one would you use to compare? I that? think you would go high protein ketogenic or more of a low protein ketogenic, like the classic ketogenic, right? Yeah, because so. classic ketogenic is not high protein. No, it's, and the so goal of classic all. ketogenic, just so people know, it was medical. It was medically yeah. applied. And the goal was to get ketones as high as possible to uh, to treat certain medical conditions uh, like uh, epilepsy, for example. Um, 
But no, most people who follow these days, most people are not on a ketogenic diet for medical reasons. Like I, I don't. Have you guys ever met anyone doing ketogenic? No, diet everybody does. Ke- no, they're all doing it for fat loss. For fat it's, loss, right? Yeah. They but, heard it from some biohacker. That's usually how I find out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's and you know what's funny? When keto was was a big thing, there was even a lot of messages about, "Oh my god, don't eat too much protein, kick you out of ketosis." Mm-hmm. That could be a bad thing. Well, no, actually, it's. Uh, I mean, unless it's it's for medical reasons. No, you want the protein to be high. So this is really it's it's just another. It's another study, and what I like about this is they were both low calorie, yeah. and everything else was very similar. The only difference was this group ate more protein than that group. So is mTOR really just overhyped at this point? If we're going to go back and revisit uh, uh, some of our earlier stances of you know some of the crazy versions of of how far you can go with uh, protein intake and the the dangers of that versus now like seeing how beneficial well, i think if you go extreme so like i let's say a guy who weighs 180 pounds right and he's high protein would be like 180 grams of protein i look i've i've known people to go two and a half three times body weight right but the, and what, what happens with that doesn't leave much room for other other macronutrients would you really consider here. 180 180 really high i would consider that like good i wouldn't consider that for real. the average person it's high Oh, okay. So yeah, for, I'm like, not talking about bodybuilder. Okay, average person, they're normal because the average person grossly under consumes. They don't protein. get close to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, almost that. every like, you, I mean, I feel like you have this category of fitness enthusiasts and bodybuilder type people, and then you have er- the average person. The average person and the like, the the difference in protein intake is well, look, dramatically. If you're, different. If you're a 180 pound male and you want to eat 250 yeah. grams of protein. You're probably going to be taking at least 100 grams of protein in, in so protein powders, yeah, because it's really hard. So yeah. there's that extreme, right? There's yeah. that extreme, um, and studies don't show any additional benefit from going above about a gram uh, per pound of body weight. Really, I haven't seen any studies that really show too much benefit going above that. So that's when I say high protein. That's what I'm uh, referring to. But yeah, it's just another study showing the the value of eating protein in in controlling insulin and health parameters, fat loss, muscle. Uh, controlling satiety, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's the direction you want to go. I mean, I'd say it's one of the most um, basic strategies that I stick to year round. Like, you know, I, there's we just came off a bunch of vacations where, you know, I drank and I ate out and I enjoyed myself, had desserts yeah. here and there. Um, but one of the things that I've learned has helped me through those times is not telling myself I can't enjoy those moments, can't have drinks. I'm going to enjoy my drinks with my friends. I'm going to do these right. things. But but making sure that I'm always targeting protein first and like getting a protein meal. Like So if I'm like, oh, for example, we had cinnamon rolls one night, right? I had bought these these you know cheap generic cinnamon rolls and had been craving and I wanted to have those, but first I wanted to. I had this big old, you know, ten ounce, you know, chicken chicken meal with rice before I, I mm-hmm. let myself have that. Versus in the past, you know, I'm oh I'm already starting to get a little hungry. Oh, the cinnamon rolls are cooking. I'm just going to go crush three of those or have something else quick and then that and then or fill up on the cinnamon rolls. Where instead I go, okay, I'm still going to enjoy a cinnamon roll. And what ends up happening is. I don't even eat a full one because it, I, I get an, a couple bites of it and I'm already get that satis, get yeah. satisfied and I'm okay because I, I just ate before that. I, I have found that strategy as one of the best ways to kind of mitigate uh, the weight gain over like a vacation totally. period. Uh, same here. It's easy too. Yeah. yeah and it's it, really easy. And it's not restrictive. You're not no. telling yourself you can't have the drink. You can't do this. You're just saying like, hey, I know my body needs this much protein. If I, all this muscle I was working, I worked my ass off for over the, the earlier part of this year before I went on this little three week vacation of not yeah. really training, kind of enjoying myself. I don't want it to all go away because I grossly underconsume protein every single day and I make bad food choices. So all I'm going to tell myself is, hey, Adam, make sure every meal you get a good serving of protein. Eat that first. And then, hey, if you want to have a drink or, hey, you want, and I swear, that has made the biggest difference on the swings I used to go through. I was just going to say, so when we did the episode with the, uh, the the dietitian who works with continual glucose monitors, and they talk about how eating protein first blunts that blood sugar and insulin response. Mm-hmm. Like if you eat the protein first, then go have the cinnamon rolls, the crappy behavioral, uh, you know, the, 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 the crappy feelings you get after when that crash happens, which you might not even feel a crash. You just might notice more cravings or irritability, or maybe your energy's a little off, right? 
it helps control that. So you could you still have the cinnamon rolls. You yeah. just had the protein first. Yeah. Now back to what you said, Justin, about mTOR. So I'm not an expert on mTOR, but I know a little bit about it. And I know mTOR is mammalian target rapamycin is what it stands for. And it's a it's a driver of cell growth in particular, muscle growth. It also can drive cancer, right? But I'm going to use an analogy because a lot of there's a lot of fear around anything that can cause cancer to grow. So let's use testosterone for example. Mm. I don't think I don't think I have to argue that having high normal levels of testosterone is healthier for men. There's tons and tons of studies on this to show that it improves quality of life. If men's testosterone levels are in the high normal range, they're better off when it comes to heart disease. They're better off when it comes to dementia, Alzheimer's, muscle, fat, mobility. Uh, quality of life, libido, all these different things, right? If you have a testosterone-sensitive cancer, testosterone can now fuel cancer. So if I have prostate cancer and I'm in that state and, my, and I have super high testosterone, that can actually drive the growth of that cancer. Okay, so mTOR in the context of normal is perfectly fine. H high mTOR in the context of cancer can definitely drive cancer, right. but so can carbohydrates, yeah. proteins, and even Wh fat. Whatever's going to feed eat. it, yeah. Yes, because they're cells. Primarily, yeah. So what they do is they say, oh my God, mTOR, we don't get that too About high. the only thing that's going to help it is fasting it, right? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the problem is they'll say, oh, mTOR, oh, you know, you don't want to raise that too much because then you're going to get cancer. No, it doesn't work that way. Well, you just cause so many of those alarmist articles, yes. right? And so that's why I bring that up because it's just like, it's one of those things you'll get we have this split division of like wellness people versus like performance and, yeah. and, you know, the kind of bodybuilder uh, sphere. And so I always would, would then see like a wellness practitioner kind of like really mention like, you got to really restrict a lot of the protein intake because of this. And so, yeah, I, I kind of had that sense. It was a bit overhyped. It was just like always in the, the, sort of the, uh, the conversation though. Yeah. I think it's part of the, 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 the whole propaganda. We've talked about this, the whole, like everybody needs to stop eating meat. Propaganda. Have you and guys ever yeah. gone on phases where you try to go kind of lower protein just yeah. to see how your body responds mm -hmm. and yep. feels? So it's like good that? to step away for a bit. I I, mean, I, don't I feel good when I go low protein for a day, but I'm also going low calorie for a day, so it's almost like fasting. That's so it. that's it's the same. same that's my then. only. So I've done it before, where it's like that a day, a couple of days, or like that, and then I've done it for extended periods of time. And what I find, going back to the point I was just making with my vacation, is if I do, if I start stringing consecutive days together. Uh, my body just pairs down muscle totally. fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I am, I will, I, I'll lose weight, but I'll lose muscle as fast as I am yeah. losing body fat um, when I do not hit my protein intake consistently. But having a day where I take a complete break, a fast type of day, or just a really low calorie, low protein type of day, I feel phenomenal from that. I noticed that. Yeah, and I mm -hmm. think that has more to do with just taking a break. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. if it was, if it wasn't, if it was a low protein, high calorie day, I think I'd feel like crap. You know what I mean? I, I same thing, Adam. If I go low protein for two for you know three, four, five days in a row, I start to not feel so good. I can I well, can definitely tell in my muscle um, and in my energy. Yeah, uh, I think it's thing. just a lot of work, you know, for your digestive system to be constantly inundating it with protein, and so to step away from that and allow things to kind of um, you know work work their way through. Like so, I just fast, or, or like maybe I'll just focus on uh, every now and then I'll. I'll be like, okay, maybe I'm not getting enough fiber. I need to like, you know, really address that and then like maybe back off the protein a bit. Yeah. But now, now that advice though, I'm only giving that to other fitness enthusiasts mm -hmm. like ourselves because yep. I feel like for most of my career, um, clients that I train struggle to consistently hit protein. Yeah. It's hard, it, it, especially if, unless you're naturally, like I've had a few clients that are like huge meat eaters and they love to eat meat and those or tend to be the clients that are easier to hit those targets. But unless you're somebody who like absolutely loves to eat lots of meat, it is really tough to hit 130, 150, 200 grams for bigger guys like yeah. of protein well, day in and day out. Let's put this in context, Adam. So let's say the average woman weighs, uh, I don't know what the average woman weighs, let's say 140 pounds. I don't know if that's the average, but let's just say the average woman weighs 140 pounds. And a six ounce chicken breast is about 35 grams. 36 ounces. So That's a good size chicken breast. Yeah. You'd okay. have to eat what twelve, what uh, eighteen ounces or something like that to get one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty grams, yeah. maybe more. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a lot of chicken breast. Yeah, that you'd have to. Eat. How much steak would well, that be? You're, talking about, like four, yeah, you're talking about like four. You're talking about like four, four, like a a typical female is going to maybe eat one of those at each meal. 
And that would mean she needs four of those. Yeah. Okay. So wow. four of her meals need to be this big old chicken breast and then whatever carb starch or whatever that she's going right. to go with that. And just that's not common. No. It's not yeah. common that I would get a client to be like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely knocking that out every day. No problem at 135 pound female. Like, no. So they most people and most people think they eat a lot because they they're like, oh, yeah, at every meal I, I tend to have a protein. Well, yeah. OK, well, if you only eat on average, because yeah. the average person only eats twice I have a day. three turkey slices. They'll say something like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Or, or, or the mistake I used to make as a kid, like I was getting I remember getting like deli sandwiches, yep. you know, and delis put two to four ounces of meat on your fucking sandwich. That's nothing. Dude, mm -hmm. four ounces of turkey. I'm always doubling and that's a that's like a large. That's yep. a large. Mm -hmm. You go to like Togo's or one of the like one of those sandwich places and you get a large sandwich it's like four ounces of meat on there and even doubled up which is a ton feels like a ton of meat for the average person yeah. it's still only eight ounces i know i always ton. feel like i'm behind unless that's literally what i'm targeting directly first like i need to get the meat established and like this is the priority of the meal and then i'm going to build around that oh boy you're gonna love this episode we have a special treat for you in this episode but before we do here's the giveaway maps strong strong man inspired workout great workout program for free here's what you got to do to win Maps strong. I'm going to do something a little different. Go to our other Mind Pump channel, Mind Pump Clips. Subscribe to this channel, to that channel. Turn on notifications. Come back, leave a comment below uh, this particular video in the first 24 hours. You do those things, and we like your comment. We'll notify you, and we'll give you free access to Maps Strong. Also, in this episode, Adam actually got to, he threw in, he did some modeling pictures back in the days. They're amazing, very attractive, slightly erotic. So check this out. If this video gets 100,000 views in the first week, he will release some of the other pictures that nobody's ever seen. And I swear to God, everybody, you're going to want to see these pictures. You're really going to see these pictures. So share this video. Make it hit 100,000 views in the first week so we can see Adam naked hugging a bush. I'm not making it up. That's a real picture that he took back in the day. Also, we got a sale going on right now. The RGB bundle, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, bundled together, 50% off, plus some free stuff included. Also, MAPS Suspension is 50% off. So if you're interested in any one of those, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the coupon code JULY50, so that's JULY50, no space, for that massive, massive discount. All right, here comes the show. Have you guys had any of the the pork chops? Like uh, just to speaking about meat, um, like Courtney started to to, to make it in the air fryer. You, wait, hold on, you mean the butcher box ones? Yeah, the ones this guy's been talking I'm, about it. For are a they year. not the best? I haven't had it yet. Are That's they right, the, the heritage. Yeah, you've been mentioning. They this. taste better than normal pork. Okay, don't they? so I finally had it, and it was it was phenomenal. Um, How'd I you mean, cook it? So it was in the air fryer, which was uh, you know I didn't think anyway. She found a recipe for it. And it was like it, it makes it really juicy, and it's not like sometimes the worst part about pork if you do it wrong it gets really dry yes. and it's like Ugh. yeah yeah uh, so it was like perfect but <laughs> then you guys will make fun of me for this but like as she just added a little crust of like it's like a parmesan like a cheese or something with oh, like some garlic that's, that's and it was good. like oh my god dude, it's so good uh but yeah so that was uh, like that's literally like, my meal today again like i like my whole meal is like okay now i'm gonna take the meat that we cooked last night and then i'm gonna keep you know making that the priority throughout the week is like you cook this and then i'm gonna listen like, did you watch how she so did she actually put the crust on in the air fryer and it melted into it or after the fact do you remember um that's a good question i, th I think it was i think it was afterwards oh, okay right, where she put it in like the oven to kind of crust it ah yeah i think that's how how she did it yeah i'm telling you I, i've been saying this since, and i'm glad you finally tried them i still have heritage them. pork tastes way better than the regular stuff. i am not a pork fan at all i'm not yeah. i never like pork chops everybody's oh i like i never liked them yeah me either then i uh, butcher box i don't remember when it was it was a while ago but they had like you know sometimes they run like specials on certain things, uh -huh. like add-ons. That's what it is, box add-ons. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'll give this a shot. And Jessica made them, and I, was, I wasn't I was that excited. I'm like, all right, pork, whatever, we'll eat it because we got it. And I, it's one of my favorite things now. Yeah. And it just tastes different. I couldn't figure out why it tastes. I thought it was the way she made yeah. it, and she doesn't make it good. It's the heritage pork. Well, I've told yeah. you guys that I've compared. I mean, I, I think Doug and I both cooked the ribs this weekend. So, I mean, I'm-, I'm It's cons pork ribs. Yes. Yeah, see? Yeah, and consistent with them because I've tried other, since, the, since we, like, I mean, we've been working with Butcher Box for a few years now. And there's been multiple times where I've had to go get other pork because I just didn't have it. And I had already used up my butcher box pork ribs. And so I went and get, a, get this grocery store. 
and they just not even close, dude. Not even close to the the butcher box. It's the, I have now. I'm like I won't even cook ribs unless it's I have their that. breed. Maybe Doug, you can look up heritage pork versus conventional. I'd like to see if they look different. Like what's the deal? Yeah, with these, it's pigs. how they're raised. No, it, it's a breed. It's definite different flavor. It's a different. Oh, it's actually uh, a breed. I'm of pretty pig sure it's that's a different. Breed. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was how they were raised. No, I know that they're raised. There. So obviously they have different standards, right? Butcher box like grass fed, and you have to be you know a particular way. So I know there's that. Yeah, but no, I've had no you know, antibiotics and hormones. I've had that other pork like that. It doesn't taste the same. I think it's a breed, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. I don't know what are you finding, Doug. An original breed of pig uh, found on pig farms before the industrial agricultural boom. Yes, yeah, so it's different. So it's an old. Oh. Can you look up a picture and see a heritage? Sure. Po- so maybe pig it's a combination of that of not only how they're fed, and then on top of that, it's also a different breed yeah. of pig, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Must be more expensive then. I mean, it, I, why I, wouldn't you? I, I think it's it's not. Oh wow! Yeah. I have a picture here. They they have hair. It looks can you like. can you pull oh, it up? Okay. Doug? So they're a little more wild. Yeah, a little more wild maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe pull up a picture on the on the TV. Yeah, because it's see. it's crazy how quick that happens too. If you've ever like if you oh, oh shit they you look let a domestic they look pig like out. a sheep pig. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, they grow hair and then tusks pretty pretty quickly. Oh, all pigs. Yeah. You're, you're, okay, so you know that if you put if you take a you probably know this because you were around farms. You take a pig and you put it in the woods. It changes like yeah. itself doesn't that like the next generation i actually didn't know that I didn't you don't know either. that no no we didn't they turn we, into we like didn't free any pigs so yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So i don't I know you know all kinds like of weird. I, know, I mean i then, do got some farm knowledge yeah. but I, I mean that's like wild knowledge you know yeah there was like uh, this one i remember reading the story where really they, so if you set a they're almost like werewolves like that it's kind yeah of they'll grow tusks yeah. and they'll go wild on yeah. their own their body adapts that fast, that fast. yes yeah. there was this one okay that's so, fascinating so there was this one world record uh wild hog that was shot by a, a hunter and it was a massive i remember seeing the picture was years ago massive looked like a boar but it was huge i'm like this is crazy i don't know they got that big but then you read in the article and they're like it was a domesticated pig because they get bigger, right? The domesticated ones, yeah, that, that pumping them full of grains. That went into the, the yeah, went into the woods, and, yeah, yeah, and then became in survival wild. mode. Yeah. What? Yeah, and they uh, get really big. I know, isn't that weird? That's what's weird about that is like, okay, so you're like their body knows. Yeah, and and well, even that, even if it did know, you would think that it would take years to adapt. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. like generations of having more pigs before it finally turned into like a wild pig. The fact that it like that same pig. That's. Yeah, imagine if that happened to us, like going in the woods. I feel like there's some I there's, think it does. there's some there's some <laughs> science why I live in the woods. To do there, like that adaptive process. Like we should be able to tap into it, tap into that turn, a little bit, turn us into a superhero. Yeah, pig man, <laughs> <laughs> man bear pig. Yeah, bear, I didn't know. I did. I did not know that. Isn't that weird? Yeah, you dropped some farm knowledge on me right there. Super wild. I'm impressed. Anyway, I got to tell you guys about a new show on Netflix that I found. What? Oh, oh, I don't what remember you, the name of it. Oh, uh, maybe Doug can find. Caution our audience always whenever you give. I already know show which one it is because okay, so oh you do you get well yeah I've just just gonna guess because there's like the suggested new shows out and there's one about a sex room i'm like this is probably up sal's out <laughs> yeah <laughs> right it didn't even get suggested to me how, no. how weird is that well, i guess i'm in that loop too yeah, so yeah. I, I can't uh, so, deny that so this so what it is here's the premise of the show it's mm-hmm. actually kind of interesting so this woman you know all these like like home renovation shows right Where yeah, yeah. Like design like yeah, yeah. whatever right <laughs> anyway this woman who's a she's a, a top designer goes to these people's homes and designs a sex, she calls it a sex room. Now, some couples just want a room that's kind of like a spa where they can connect. Yeah. Some families or couples, I say families because there's oh. like these polyamorous groups that were also on the show that want like specific types of sex rooms. With yeah, like I thought it was like S&M, and M, yeah, kind of. Uh, oh, some of them are. Okay. Some of them oh. are wild. Like okay. there's this one group that she met with where she meets with this couple and everybody kind of looks kind of different in the show. So you're like, all right, what's the deal here? Anyway, she's talking to this couple. And they're like, oh yeah, all of our we have our other partners, and so I guess they're a group that yeah. they're all together. There's like five or six of them, and they were into some pretty Voltron. They were enough. into some pretty kinky shit, and so she asked them, "What are your kinks? What is this? What are that?" And then she designed the room around, and the, the, some of the rooms are crazy. Like this How? one was like a huge. <laughs> this is like primetime TV, dude. bro. I know there's a huge shower in this one. There's like dildos oh, on the wow. walls in one of them. Now, how just, much of this do you wow. think has been accelerated because of how much like? Pornography is accelerated. Into oh, f- are you yeah. kidding me? Pornography's changed 
so many things. That's what I mean. Like, so I mean, would you think that something like that, even like the TV show or the, even the profession for someone to do this, would even exist thirty years ago? Uh, I think. Oh, not at this scale. That's what I no mean. way. Not that's, at this. That's scale. what I mean. Enough to obviously create a show or a person who has a job that actually does this. I feel like it would be like a very well, did small the demand thing. increase after like Fifty Shades of Grey. You know that whole book that came out in the movie and like it's sort of like in the the culture now where it's like oh I also I, think, I just think room. ever since Pornhub with, with and having access on your phone oh, dude, that's ha, like, has to have accelerated that that's like, had a huge yeah. impact on our culture yeah. massive impact but yeah Jessica and I are watching this and we're just like why would you be on a show like trying this? to get ideas or and like, that was, <laughs> no. this guy's like this. I mean my that's whole, why you watch home improvement shows yeah, is they get ideas my, hey some uh, of the rooms look yeah. some of the rooms look really cool and nice uh, some of them are like why would I walk like, wow they have attachments for drills oh yeah, dude, they got a room with like like there's little like just just like <laughs> look honey they seem normal penises like us. up and down the wall I'm like oh, come on swings everywhere at some point waterfalls. when the room looks silly like you yeah. come in we're like oh, okay we've had this for a few years like this is kind of looking a little weird I don't know plus if you have an extra room in your house is that the direction you want to go we're gonna turn this into. <laughs> I, I mean, know. is this what we're gonna convert garages? It's like yeah, a, it's like, like half yeah. that, half a guest room. You know yeah, <laughs> and there's a secret entrance. You know, you gotta <laughs> knock a few times. Yeah, where, where am I sleeping? Yeah. Uh, turn, take a left at the dildo, and then you. Got yeah, the I, I mean, I see something like that. And I just think like a, a two people found each other that were both like you know madly addicted to pornography for a long time. That's what I think. Yeah. I think like okay, two people that like would want to build a room like that. They were both people that at one point. Some of the episodes aren't like that. Like there was one where it was a, a couple and they're definitely like, you know, flirty and stuff. And she tries to bring out the sexual stuff, the, the woman who does the, the interview or whatever, the, uh -huh. the designer. But they they were both divorced, previous you know marriages. They both brought kids into the relationship. They seem like a pretty genuine, like normal or whatever you want to say, couple. And then he proposes to her in the room that they make. But the room was more of a like spa, cool, chill environment. But then again, like I said, there's some episodes where you're like, this is the. Oh, this so it's is gonna get messy. Now. Yeah, this yeah. is the. This is the. <laughs> this is the cage you could put your boyfriend oh, in. The vis queen we're gonna lay out. Yeah. And, and beat him, and then this yeah. is the. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going wow. a little. <laughs> That's kind of wild, dude. A yeah. little too far. Anyway, um, let's talk about a music, uh, a band, I should say, rock band. I guess you could say that really has disappointed me in the last few years. What you, happened? Raging no, Machine. Raging Against the Machine. What happened? I knew it. They're what just they? so not. They are. They should be called. They should call themselves. They're so not raging anymore. No, they, they are the machine now. They, They're yeah, the machine. We became the machine. They were so counter, like culture and this and that and their music. And then this you, is my same irritation with punk rock and like you know back in the day it was all about like kicking the system and and you know challenging things and like being the the one that's against the grain. Yeah. You know and now it's just like. No, like all the same voices are like, you have to do this, conform, 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 like whatever the, the cause or whatever the thing is that culture and, and government is trying to impose. It's like, Dude. oh, you need to do that. Step in line. It's just I mean, weird. do you it's expect just, anything different though? Are, are all, four, all four of them in there from like Harvard and stuff like that? Aren't they I all? I have no idea. Yeah, they all have like Ivy, Ivy League. Really? Yeah, education. Yeah. No, they're all really smart. Oh my god! You know, look up, uh, look up the the band's education. I'm pretty sure Rage has got a, a really high education. I mean, I love their music, so when I listen to it, I pretend he's that they're... from Berkeley. I think, right? No, I think it's Harvard. I think I don't know. I don't. They were talking about Berkeley. abolishing the Supreme Is Court. It? Yeah, they were like, "Oh, we need to abolish the Supreme Court." I'm like, what? Yeah, 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 two of them are from uh, Harvard. Yeah, yeah, Harvard. I didn't know yeah, that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Have I you guys ever been to one of their concerts? I haven't. That was a bucket list for me. Yeah. I mean, I love Rage Against Machine. I just, yeah, like you said, I was bummed out because my two best friends did it in Vegas, and I missed out on it. I was supposed to go on that trip. I can't remember why. I think it was working. Do you want? Hey, you want to know what my kids got into? What? Metallica. Yeah. Do you Dude, know why? Stranger Things, crushing it. Stranger Things. Okay, so uh, not only that, and then the other song that was like an '80s song. I forget what the artist's name is, but like where she's putting. Oh the, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Who, I know who you're talking about. So yeah, yeah so. It, that show has done a lot for these artists and resurrected their their popularity. Wow! Uh, and so their sales went through the roof. Metallica sales went through the roof. Really? Uh, so, New generation. So the bassist now for Metallica, he used to be part of Suicidal Tendencies. Mm -hmm. His son, I believe, is in Stranger Things, like jamming uh, with uh, that the, the main guy that that's like the sort of 
um, a Dungeons and Dragons master. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I would be so curious to be like a fly on the wall in the conversation leading up to all this. Like, was that the intent? Like, was did Metallica like? Well, so okay, so uh, did, you, they, you did they did they offer like a really good partnership or deal because they thought on the back end they were gonna get all these crazy sales, or did you did Stranger I, Things have to pay them big I money? I bet you they, they had approached, to pay them royalties, or yeah. I bet you they approached Metallica. Okay, so you don't watch Stranger Things, right? I I actually did watch the first two seasons. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Was, or at least one and a half. Did, yeah. Why didn't you finish? Too scary? No, just not my, <laughs> not my... I really enjoyed all the 80s references, and I yeah. thought that was fun. They but, crush it with that. Yeah. But it kind of got old for me. Yeah, so they, Didn't so, you, Doug, have the same experience? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, the last season I saw just got way too outlandish. Right? I really, think that's what I... It yeah. just season got ridiculous. Like you got, once people. you kind of saw like the, the, the monster and stuff like that, it was like the suspense leading up to seeing the monster was cool yeah. and then when you got to see it it was kind of over well the last me. season was this last one that came out I thought was cool I mean everybody said it crushed I heard yeah, it was, it was amazing good. but so obviously yeah, it's in the 80s four is really good. and one of the key, one of the uh, characters is like this kind of metal head right kind yeah. of nerd type of and there's a scene where they're in the what do they call it the upside down where the where all the monsters or creatures are and to attract or to, to cause a distraction they're on the top of a mobile home and he's playing the guitar in this dark, so it looks super metal. It looks like the cover of like a an old metal band's, you know, okay. what, what a, you know, cassette tape or whatever. Yeah. And the song that they play of all songs of Metallica, that they pick Master of Puppets. Master of Puppets. One of their most like Master metal songs, right? Pulling strings. Yeah. yeah. And my kids yeah. were like loving it. Yeah. So now my sons listen to Metallica all the time. Like, thank you, Stranger Things. I That's kind of cool. Yeah. So we're like bonding. I'm like, you know, this is one of the yeah. First so songs back I to what you to. think. So you great, think dude. that you think that Stranger Things came after Metallica? I would think so yeah. because it's kind of it's it's because they're doing right? references like in in the like, of course like I guarantee they had in their mind. Like, Can you look up Doug and tell me if they how have to find a metal? Paid? You know, like they for that particular kind of vibe. Well, imagine what a huge win that is for them. So they probably got paid on the front end. Uh, Introduced a whole new generation. And they got a whole new generation into their music. I mean, that could have yeah. a huge... Well, you saw what that did for Queen when they were in uh, Wayne's World. Yep. Yes. It just, you know... Oh my like, God, I so, forgot about that. That's yeah, true. No, that's such a good yeah. point. That's why I'm asking this question because, I mean, we've seen this happen enough times that maybe... They didn't. Maybe they came to them and said, "Hey, here's a deal. Like we could pay you, you know, or or what we yeah, could." Maybe do. they're fans of the show and we're like, "Hey, you could use our right." So I'm I'm curious if it, there was some sort of albums. a deal that, w and if they kind of knew that this was potentially going to happen with such a popular show that there yeah. was a good chance that it was and exactly like Wayne's World. That's a great example. No, so we were driving. We were in the car and we had all just watched uh, that episode of Stranger Things, and so I'm like, "Hey, do you guys know what that song is called or whatever?" And my daughter, you know, my daughter's twelve. She's like. Oh, that's Master of Puppets. That's Metallica. Oh, it's really cool. So I'm like, oh, you know, that's the first song I worked out to. I said, did are you have you listened to any other music in that genre from that era? And my my daughter, again, my 12 year old, she goes, there's a song about a jungle coming to the jungle. I'm like, welcome, <laughs> welcome to, to the, the jungle. jungle. <laughs> I'm like, you listen to that too? It's like, you know, my heart's just you know filling with pride. I've been <laughs> on a GNR kick lately too. I've As my kids are listening to that's it. great. That, that kind of gives me hope. You know, it's like maybe like the next the generations coming up will start getting back into actually like people playing instruments. Why well, yeah, I, I, just like hitting buttons like in the tree drop. Yeah, I feel like rock, rock has let me down Over the most. It. Like, so I love like all genres and out of all of us, I probably listen to the most genres of music yeah. and raw. I listen to way less. Like I listen to new, there's new hip hop. I listen to there's new country that I listen to. There's not a lot of new rock. I listen to. I go back to older rock. Yeah, it's been pretty dry. It's, I, I have not found, and I know you've thrown a couple my way and there's Greta a couple of fleets. And yeah. There's the, a few that I have on my, on yeah. my, on my playlist that I, I kind of like, but I mean, there hasn't been a Metallica, a GNR, a Pantera. A, there hasn't been a band like that. I that bet is, you'll see it now. Yeah. You think so? Now with this new generation, it seems like it's... I, I Okay, so... I I've, hope so. I hope you'll bring back something that will be that iconic that people well, will listen to, to it for... Shout Falling in Reverse. Like, uh, I guess they're they're crushing right now. Is they're it like the, zo rock. the zombie one? The yeah. one that, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, when I was in uh, uh, Vegas recently, I saw a, a few old school... Um, metal shirts, like the concert. Oh, okay. Shirts. Well, that's super popular right now, which is I think and funny these are kids, and trendy. Though. Yeah, but there's kids that are rocking that shirt. You get that like Target. Yes, yeah, it's like there, uh, I, there's been. I've seen kids rocking Nirvana shirts, so they never fucking listened to a Nirvana song before. Like, there's a lot of that going on oh, right okay. now. Yeah, because trendy. Like posers. Yeah. Yes, it's trendy 100%. and it's cool. I saw too. some Megadeth ones. I was like, hey, yeah, no, that's that it's yeah. become popular to wear like '80s rock like concert shirts. And then half the kids don't even listen to the, wow. the well, Kardashians. Well, yeah, speaking of like, music, uh, so it looks like I may be uh, in a music 
video what? or song? Hey, oh, remember I sent said, that? That's right. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. You, you didn't email that? That you... No, no, no. What happened? So, okay, so the, that, that dude, one journeyman is going to be Oh, the journeyman bro, one? Dude. Shut up, bro. Yeah. Can we please make like a t-shirt or something? I it's know, really need to. This one, this it's, 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 one, it's a quote that I did on a show. went viral. And, and, and not from that show specifically, but lots of pages yeah. that have nothing to do with fitness or sharing it. And it's me saying, you know, it's the journey that counts. I feel counts like that audio clip must be on TikTok somewhere or something where people can just grab it. And then yeah, like, that's what I'm curious about. How, how is it being reproduced I have so no quick idea. by so many different people? I have no idea, but I got a message from a music producer and he's like, hey, uh, I want to oh, I want to sample better. this yeah. and put it on one of my that's songs. so cool, like, dude. You gotta be kidding me, dude. The man who loves walking will walk further than the man who loves the destination. Okay, so what's happened along that process? You've learned to love the journey, right? You love the journey. Man, when you love the journey, the goals just happen. The, the, you hit milestones as a side effect, right? I mean, that's cool and it's great and I love it, but I don't love it as much as I love the journey. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't want to. Come it's, on, it's, man. It's, so for the audience, they, it's like a, it's a running. We have our our personal thread where that we all communicate when we're not around each other. And it's been the running joke that we call Sal the journey journeyman <laughs> journeyman. And I say when we go places now, we're gonna get we're gonna get recognized, but none of us will get recognized. It'll be just be Sal to be like it's journeyman and journeyman. Who loves the journey. It's I mean, you, you huge pages though, huge yeah. pages, millions and millions of followers. Well, most of them it. don't even. Know. I've seen it on a Red Bull thing. I saw it on Caesar Milan's page. I've seen it. Uh, who else did I see it on? That was ma yeah. I mean, tons of massive pages. There's like business pages. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, investment yeah. Well, pages. Yeah, that's the funny good. part. Remember we did those gifts uh, where we're doing yeah, yeah. things like so uh i've been recently tagged on a few of yours and mine and like one of them was like in this presentation for microsoft they're used like the, the stupid uh, yeah. and another like like commercial campaigns have been using it for all that stuff and i'm like do people are going to know us for all the random shit <laughs> yeah, not like the actual content <laughs> we're trying to help the people that we educate. Grew show. <laughs> yeah you know it's funny too people be funny. people think oh if you just go viral with something like that like you just it's like you turn it's into, worthless uh, yeah it's worthless it it, no it doesn't it doesn't all do it does is it gets me i get random messages from like family members i haven't talked to for a while yeah. hey look what i saw well, it just it, it, it garners voice. the wrong attention. If, unless you're building a business specifically around something that's related to that, it's absolutely worthless. Yeah. I did. I don't know if you guys have been watching. I've been doing throwback posts of of mind pump stuff. Oh, uh -huh. okay. yeah. So it, it, a lot of people have been like, "Oh, more of these." I mean, we're re coming up on ten years since we've been linked up. So it's like now it's a little. Has it really been almost a decade? Yeah, yeah. Especially if you count the time that when you guys were starting to build just now we're working on level up before yeah. we even got together so i've got content from yeah. you know photos and things that we took and shot and did before that just like you guys do so that's 10 years plus now or right at 10 years yeah 2012 2013 time is when that was all happening and so i've been sharing some of these old posts and you know i shared this one of these pictures i've never shared and i and i'm meaning to i'm going to share for you guys cuz i know you get a kick out of the the swing or one of those stupid ones oh were you yeah, yeah. yeah. and i know you guys oh have seen God. but nobody else has seen so your, i'll share your erotic we, we all have one of those yeah, yeah so i'll share with the audience i'll share it for the audience Please do that they the can make they can make fun of me where so you're in the swing but i did a post naked. from that from those <laughs> shoots i did a post in those shoots that you know back then I didn't know what I was doing. Like I, all I, m my goal at that point, Justin was handling a lot of the the tech side as far as managing the all the the project managers and the and the uh, um, engineers and stuff like you that. You were the, the thirst trap. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, really, what it was was, was I, I saw it, the dude. writing on the wall with social media. I mean, I saw what was happening yeah. with Instagram, Twitter, and and all. And this was before TikTok. We needed stuff. an audience. And so, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I wasn't stupid. I knew that we, could, no matter how amazing of an app, which by the way is a mistake. I see people make all the time is like they have this brilliant idea for an app, but then they have nobody to sell it to. It's like right. you could have the best app in the world yeah. if you don't have an audience yep. to get it to get it off the ground and get it going. You're never going to go anywhere. So I knew that was going to be paramount to the success of what we were trying to do. So Justin was handling the back and stuff. My goal was let's figure out how I can garner this attention mm -hmm. so we had an audience. And at the beginning, I was just throwing spaghetti on the wall. I mean, I'm posting my car, my watch. I'm just watching what everybody, all these other kids are doing. Yeah. And I remember going and getting that those these photo shoots. You so, no, wait, so I want to let's go back yeah, and talk about early days. I yeah, mean, yeah, please, yeah. God, if, yeah. I hope Andrew posts this on the video so people can see. 
I'm so, only giving them one. I'm not giving them all of them. Really. Oh, Just so I, you know, I'm not, there's some. like a hundred that no one's ever seen. No, them. except for maybe <laughs> And you Katrina. had your best friend like uh, yes. taking the picture. Okay, so yeah, yeah. even walk, more amazing. Walk me through this. So you you, you never did anything like this before. And you're right. like, hey, never. dude, I need to do some like. Some so my buddy, is a, my buddy is a is a, a, a landscape photographer and he's really good. He's really talented. It's actually a side hustle. He does weddings and stuff like that every now and then. He's, this is my child. We go back to fourth grade. Okay. So we go way, way back. And uh, and he's <laughs> he's totally he is totally not interested in anything yeah. I do still to this day like he don't give a shit about what I do or what that like he's a principal and he's into other things and like we 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 actually don't have a lot in common now that we're adults and stuff uh, but anyways How do you he's feel about taking sexy pictures of me well yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of was like that right so no. <laughs> first I had to lead up to how it got to that right so. The first thing that gave my page traction, this is I actually got into the thousands. I think I'm close to like 10,000 followers this time was sharing my transformation and literally just like with my iPhone and shitty lighting right, in right. the bathroom of like, this is what I look like before. This is and showing my progress mm -hmm. start. I, a lot of these like transformation pages back then when the, a lot of those fitness pages were sharing me and it was blowing me up. And so that got me that first bit. Then I started noticing pages that were fitness influencers that were, and what I noticed with a lot of these kids that were much bigger than I were, what they had done is they had professional photos. You could tell. You could tell that mine was shot with an iPhone 4 or 5, whatever it was right. back then, and theirs were being shot with like real like DSLR cameras, and then they were uploading it on there, and I'm like, okay, I'm missing this like professional side. And at that point, I had gotten in really good shape, so okay, I'm going to go do all these like you know, shirt off fucking photos that I'm going to take and yeah, my yeah. best and my best friend. And at this point, I'm not trying to invest a lot in this because I'm, we're not making any money at this point. We're sinking yeah. all this money into this app. So I start, I go to my buddy said, Hey, I, you know, I have some stuff. I'm trying to build uh, my fitness business right now. And you know, would you, would you take some photos for me now that I've, I've gotten down to 7% body fat and stuff like that? And he's like, well, what exactly do you want? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I think I have some ideas and like, you know, it's just I'm trying to gain more uh, attention and traction to the page and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll share a couple and then maybe together we can collaborate. And he's like, uh, yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> so I get there and it was – of all my friends too, this, this my buddy that's like this too is just the wrong one to do this with me because he's, he's, he's awkward. Were, I'm awkward. Were these all your ideas? Were you like, let me do the swing? No, no. Okay, so that is actually the a second the second shoot, not the first shoot. The first, I did like back to back shoots and you did the first one, you're like, eh, it's not risky enough. Let's go. No, no, no. Yeah. So the first one, I steered actually a lot of those. So the very first one, I steered a lot of, of the poses because he my buddy was just like, I don't fucking know what you want. You know, it's like, did you make him spray you with stuff? He, his wife sprayed me. I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wait, what, what do you mean yeah. spray? With what? like water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so dude, just, come on, that's all water part of the process, all over my dude. Body, yeah. No, you know was it? Dude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. dude. How awkward was that? Yeah. Dude, it was, it was in his living room. A fluffer, bro. dude. It was in like, his living room. It was awkward as shit. It was awful. You know. I do want to point out though. Okay. A cover of a romance novel came from yeah, that photo. One of them, one of them it, turned it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> one of them, one of them panned out, got some attention from somebody who's some author, AD Justice, who writes uh, romance novels that it ended up being on. the So, front. can you tell us what some of the? So we, we know you were on a swing on one. Maybe that's the one. So we'll that show. okay, that's a, I, okay. I'll share that one since that's the one you guys think is so funny. Well, and I, I haven't seen them all, bro. Well, oh, I'm not going to show you. You want to show us? Come on, no. You. No, I feel like we have. Bro, I will, okay, us? listen. Okay, so let me explain We're what happened family. here. You, yeah. Let me explain the rest of the story, and, and I'll give you some 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 detail of it. But I'm, I don't think I'll ever let it out. So, the first shoe was my buddy. It was awkward as hell. I got you know a good amount of pictures from him, but I, I at that point I realized okay I need to go see somebody because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm willing and I'm open. Like so, I'm like let me go find a photographer who shoots bodies. Right. So I went to a uh, what a boudoir boudoir is that how I say it, Doug? What boudoir? Yeah, yeah, boudoir the photographer. The boudoir for she's kind of sexy like lingerie. Photography. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah bedroom she photography. specializes in that. She's really good. For, I looked her up, found her in the Bay Area, and and I said, okay, I'm gonna go to her, and I'm not leading anything. Oop. I'm not gonna lead anything. I'm gonna let her tell me. Like I told her the idea, what I what I'm trying to accomplish. I said, you. I'm, oh, so you're just game. Yeah, yeah I'm game. Whatever you say, I'll do. Oh, dude. Like, so that was like in a, a stroller with a. Bro, I was naked. <laughs> I was naked by about 15 minutes in, dude. Full on naked. Full on naked. 
<laughs> Full on naked. She had me do this photo. I'll wow. never forget this. I remember looking at Katrina. Wait, but hold on a second. Hold on. Why yeah. are you naked? Are you showing your? Are you showing? No, no, I'm not showing. So it's all hiding. Yeah, yeah. So she had me. Well, she she, she had me naked, excited. and then yeah. she had me because uh, she asked me too. She's like, you know, how game are you? I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm game. I'm whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, twenty I told bucks. My, is twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever you think is gonna be good, like I'll I'll do this stuff, right? So I was like totally open about it. Dude. And uh, Adam she, down. Yeah, was, yeah. That's the name uh, of this uh, yeah. She has me. Um, if she has works, me naked, like hugging a bush, dude. So uh, is that her? Did no, that's just oh, give our an photography. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's the type. Those of are way better than Adams. That's how she. I'll look at those. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. So, Hold on a second. So you're hugging a what? A, a giant bush. So I'm naked you're and I'm hugging like hugging a bush, legs and arms, and I'm hugging. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was like, what we gotta, are we got to let's stop for a second. <laughs> <laughs> let's we gotta, we gotta pause for a second. I'm never showing that you voice in your head. Was it like? Yes, it was fucking yelling at me. Well, like, yeah. What are you doing, bro? No, right now, yeah. How are you going to use this? Yeah, yeah. 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 My, 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 yeah that voice was telling me. Hey, yeah, your landscaping buddy. I bet he reminds me of when yeah. Moses was talking to the fiery bush. Hold no. on, so hugging a bush naked. Yeah, I hugged a bush naked. I, you guys have seen this. The is there one with a big teddy bear? Or did I make that one up? No, there's one for. There's one where I, I have Isn't like a, the... a heart for like a because around that time I have seen that one. I think you have seen that one before. It was around Valentine's Day coming up, and so she wanted to do like this like Valentine's Day pose because that was going to come up, and yeah. so I could use it. And it was like me like holding this like metal heart, you know. It was like it shirts off. It's all uh, it's <laughs> oh my God. so many bad photos. There's so many Hold bad on a photos second. out of those. This is, I mean, I shouldn't say I don't want to disrespect her. Like she's a, well, that's what she, she does. Yeah, she's yeah. great at what she yeah. did and. She, I mean, she. It's just not you. That's yeah. Why she it. loved it. She used it at like yeah. advertising, and she used it for all kinds of stuff. Oh, so it's out there. Yeah, it's out there on her stuff. Like you would have to go find it's her perfect thirst trap. Yeah. Do you remember what her name was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do, and I'm not giving it to you. So oh. you guys can go searching for it. This I will. Po I'll post yeah. one. I'll give one to Andrew. So yes, something you guys can make now, did fun you, of me. Let me ask you this because uh, I've I've never done that, but I've been in situations that were just not me. So I'm kind of awkward. Did yeah. you have to like? Did you have to have a drink or something beforehand to loosen yourself? Up? I, prob <laughs> I probably smoked some weed before both situations i'm sure i did because it was um yeah i mean it, you know it's funny too because it really goes back to because that's that's if it's not remember you, how much that makes remember, you nervous you remember yeah. how much it struggled i mean i'm not i'm not a nervous type of person but i also am the type of person who has that voice in his head it's like this isn't you this is not what exactly I but i'm but i'm like uh, i'm also have a guy too who can shut that down and just be like i have a mission right now like yeah. my my job is to get Barrel a, through it yeah and i'm like i'm uh, that's the type of i'm game i'm like whatever i don't give people are gonna make fun of me people i don't care like if yeah. i if i can garner more attention for us to launch this app App, like that's my job have, have you now now that you have a yeah. son do you have, do you have a story to tell him if he ever finds these like yeah. if he's like of course hey I'll dad tell him. Of course. what what is i mean i'll be honest and share the whole i'll share the whole story with him how it all panned you out you have like, to tell him first before he finds out somewhere. well you remember like <clears throat> it was crazy is way back when i bet well i get more now because how a big mind pump is but probably just a, if you go back maybe a year ago on my Instagram, and mind pump was already pretty big um I barely am getting the same kind of likes and attention I was getting yeah. five years ago. Those those pictures were getting it, but it was all the wrong attention. You remember yeah, when we yeah. first started the podcast, I talked about all the dick pics I get and all the crazy shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, the likes, the comments, yeah, the shares, I mean, so many well, it was, it was really, it was really good. It was working. But what I quickly realized and why I abandoned using them was it was it was getting the wrong attention. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I wasn't going to go sell it. If Maybe if I was going to transition into an OnlyFans page, it would have been a very smart strategy. Yeah. But That's I, our backup plan, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Mind pump ever tanks. But I mean, this is, a, this is a common mistake, I think, fitness people make, all people make that are trying to build a business and they're trying to use a social yeah. media platform. So I, I, I understand because I went through it. And I try to help people when I see this. It's like if you're the way you are gaining attention, if it is not di totally directly connected to how you're going to monetize in the future, it's a fucking waste of time. Total. Mm -hmm. A total waste of time for you. I had to completely stop all of that and let those people fall off of my social media platform and re almost re start over rebuilding back what good valuable content which was a slower grind didn't get a bunch of attention didn't get a bunch of just comments and stuff like that but was those people were more likely to convert into customers i did yeah. i did one photo shoot nothing like that but it was very uncomfortable for me too because that's not like me and one yeah. of the photos like i'm and she's like 
make love to the camera, like the, the cliche <laughs> shit no that you way. hear. Yeah, yeah dude. you say that. And I, you know, I, and I did the, and I did the <laughs> photos, and I thought maybe I'd use some of them to promote fitness, but I, you know, it, it just didn't. It, it was, it wasn't me. Same thing. Yeah. See, yeah. like f- for me, I just immediately turned into Zoolander. And was like, I can't help myself. You know, like mm. it's just like I have to like make fun of myself immediately. You know, because I can't, I can't take any of that stuff seriously. Like you're trying to like you know dress me up a certain way and have me like look like i have to like crack on it yeah but uh yeah like speaking of having to drink you know uh before doing uncomfortable things i mean that that was the beginning of the podcast for me <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. i'm just like this is not me dude like i'm yeah. like ah trying to drink it took me a while to get through that but uh dude uh over the the last few weeks like we've been you know on vacation and whatnot and I'm like putting oh my it down God, putting it down and then i'm also trying to, to come up with ideas for like more zebiotic commercials and I realized that, like, I, I go to take one before we're having, I'm like, oh, cool. I got some Z-Biotics. Let's take those. And then we'll do, like, a cheers, whatever. And uh, it's empty. Every single buy I have is empty. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, there's none in the back either, huh? No. No, no we've gone So here's them. the thing. Once you realize z works, you got to stockpile, dude. Yeah. Like, because yeah. it's just, like, it's so, the, the worst thing is that you know it's there, but you know you're going to have, like, so, a bunch of these drinks. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, this would have been so nice, but I don't have it now. So this is an anecdote, okay? So, and because you have to be very careful when you discuss symptoms of things like hangovers and stuff like that. That's actually regulated as a medical condition. So, so this is my own anecdote, but, you know, we were in Cabo, then I was in Vegas. And I was averaging literally one, maybe two drinks a day, max. I'm not a big drinker. You guys know that. But I didn't have any z with me. And I was taking um, ibuprofen here and there. And I'd never get headaches or anything. And Jessica pointed out, she's like, you're asking me for another ibuprofen? She's like, what's going on? And I'm like, it's got to be mm-hmm. the one drink that I had. Yeah. You know, that it, it, it's, that's got to be what it is. And I, I forgot that that's I, – I mean, I guess I didn't forget, forget, but – it wasn't top of mind because for, I mean, geez, for the last couple of years before I had any drinks, I would do z I wouldn't get that. I've trained myself. Yeah. I mean, you you and I are uh, of the group. Yeah, are, we both have are, are like that. Reaction. Like I just, I one drink can make me feel bad like that. Sometimes I'm okay with just one. For sure, two will definitely make me feel that way. Yeah. And so I've trained myself that I even if I'm just going to have one or two, I just go, I go have the Z-Biotic. I mean, we did the same thing this this. I mean, luckily the Truckee house is loaded with a huge hunter pack in there. And, you know, anytime that I was going to enjoy even just a single drink, I never once got drunk the whole trip. I think the most I had on one day is three or four. I had one day, which I consider heavy drinking for me. Um, But I consistently made sure that I had the Z-Biotic before and I would, I'd wake up the next day. Feeling like a you had one of those hundred packs, but like then I had, we, Courtney, and I threw a party, and like oh, our friends yeah. are so now like in tune with the fact that we have these, and so they just would go into um, you know the pantry, grab one, and then you know party, and like I realized before I know it, like they're all empty. So I tell people how much they are because they're not cheap, and if no. you don't know, if you don't know that, then they, oh, because they think this is little little shot of looking water stuff, so they just everyone. Oh, I think they do that with every drink. Yeah, they'll take one with <laughs> yeah. them. No, 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 yeah. you just need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think they think it's no big deal because they don't realize it. Like, hey, that little thing is not cheap, so you just they just take it like, oh, it's no big deal. Just got a hundred of them. I'll take four or five for me for <laughs> next time I have a party. It's like I'm lock it up. It's like stealing fifty yeah. bucks from me, dude. <laughs> Easy there. That's yeah. my gold right there. there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, you got to check out this company called Live On Labs. They make supplements that your body actually utilizes and absorbs utilizing a technology. It's a pharmaceutical technology called liposomal technology. And right now, you can get lipoglutathione for free when you bundle it with B-complex and vitamin C. That's just to our listeners, but you have to go through our link. Go to liveonlabs.com forward slash MP for that hookup. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Amanda from Michigan. Amanda, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Good. Um, you know, I just want to start out by saying I'm going to try really hard not to be a crazy fangirl, but I have been following you guys and listening to you for about six years now. And I just want to say that you guys have, are amazing and have taught me so much. And thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. So, so what I want to say is I have been um, training consistently um, for about 20 years. Uh, I was like a bikini, bikini competitor. Sorry, I'm like super nervous right now. <laughs> I was a bikini competitor. Um, my last competition was in 2018. 
Um, since then, I've been really trying to grow the glutes um, and the legs, which I have achieved uh, using a program like five by fives and just lifting really heavy. In doing that, I have grown my back. I have got a thicker, wider back, which you know most people might really love and want, but for me, it's not really what I was looking for. So I was wondering if there's a way of still growing the glutes and the legs without growing like the bigger back and upper body as much. Yeah, great yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Are are you are you happy with your with your glute size now, or do you want to continue to grow? Oh my god! Well, it's amazing. I love the glutes. I love my legs. My husband loves my glutes and my legs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I want to maintain basically okay. without growing any more upper body. Okay. Well, first off, congratulations for getting to this point. Is a, uh, most people never really get to that point. So good job. Twenty years of training. You've been consistent. That's mm -hmm. freaking awesome. So absolutely. What you need to do to maintain is way less than what you did uh, to build. So so consider mm -hmm. that. So that's number one. Okay. Um, and and now, now I know why this is challenging because you're talking about the posterior chain, right? The glutes. Mm -hmm or on the back of the body, just like the back muscles are. And a lot of glute exercises, or at least the most effective glute building exercises will involve at least some support from the back. So you're going to get some development in both with things like squats and deadlifts and even hip thrusts mm -hmm. will involve some of those things. But you're in a position now where you want to maintain the glutes and mm -hmm. you want to not grow the back or maybe even allow the back to shrink a little bit. Yes. In which case, I would say I would stick to hip thrust. I would even do single leg hip thrust. And now you can do the exercises that we tend to talk down on: uh, donkey kickback, single leg, you know, deadlifts where you squeeze the glutes. Things that'll maintain your your glute size. They're not going to necessarily build, but they'll maintain. And what we're doing is we're we're taking the back out of a lot of these exercises. So you you may see some back atrophy, which you're okay with. But you definitely mm -hmm. won't see your back growing by I would, doing those exercises. I would be even more specific. So I would um, – I don't know if I would get rid of deadlifts completely, but I definitely would get rid of conventional deadlifts. So I would have mm -hmm. you do sumo deadlifts only just because you drop your hips down in the position more and it's going to be more glute dominant uh, mm -hmm. than, than back dominant like uh, conventional would be. Um, I would, and instead of squatting, I would do uh, Bulgarian split squats. So, so mm -hmm. I, that's those two things replacing that, I think, because that's where you're, if you're starting to do heavy, heavy conventional deadlifts and heavy squatting, yeah. it may be developing your back more than you like. And so you're, you're a perfect example of someone if I was training for bikini, uh, we would mm -hmm. just eliminate those two movements uh, out of your programming and then anywhere where they would normally go, I would probably put Bulgarian split squats or hip thrust. Uh, mm -hmm. in that in that position and then where you would do potentially deadlifts we would do sumo or put the you know the opposite one of that of the two I just recommended for squats and I think that would be that would suffice for what you're trying to do have you taken um, a few months or have you taken some time to do run through a good unilateral program and, and just yes, focus actually specific on that? I had a feeling that I'd be one of those viewers that know the, the answer to the question. Uh, I did uh, send this uh, question probably about a month ago and a couple weeks prior to that, I did my own kind of experiment and I laid off the, the traditional um, deadlifts. Um, I've been doing a bunch of split squats. Um, I've been incorporating some cardio like HIT because um, I know sometimes women have that like bulky feeling and it's from just an extra layer of fat on their muscle. So I thought maybe if I lose a couple pounds, I might see a difference and I have. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely helped a lot. So, um, like I said, I might've answered my own questions, yeah. but I just wanted to hear from the fitness gurus themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we can, sounds we, like you're on the right track. Yeah. We have a program called map symmetry. You might really like, um, oh, yeah, really. especially someone like you who's been working out for so long. Unilateral mm -hmm. training um, can really develop uh, the body in, in targeted ways. So if you don't have that, we'll send that to you. Um, let us and let us know what you think. But again, you know, remember this, okay? Because you have a lot of experience. You've been working out for a long time. Mm -hmm. What you need to do to build is like two or three times the volume and intensity than what you need to do to keep. So okay. if you like your the way your butt looks. You can drop the weight, drop the intensity, squeeze the glutes, just keep them where they're at. But that lower weight, lower intensity weight will prevent you from building any more back muscle. Um, so, you know, just consider that. Maintaining is a lot easier than, than getting there in the first place. Okay. And so you're saying like take 
squats out like barbell squats out completely yeah you could do that you, or you go do, really light you could do that i would replace it with the movements that we said yeah like so i would take barbell squats out and then that becomes hip thrust right or and, and then i would take thrust. deadlift deadlifts out and that becomes bulgarian split bulgarian squats or vice versa lunges yeah and just live in that mm -hmm. yeah but unilateral i think you'll really like yeah that's already done in that program so yep. you're not going to do any conventional deadlifting in that you're not going to do any any bilateral squatting in that it's all unilateral except so, for the last phase which yeah. you know it's it's only three weeks uh at the end of the program where you'll do some of that stuff um so let's send that to you i think you'll really like it especially someone like you with your experience i think you'll really notice a, a big difference with it mm -hmm. well thank you so much and it has been such a pleasure listening to you guys over the past six years and listening to your growing families and just the growth of your businesses and it's just awesome and i i gotta say i'm a sci-fi nerd myself and i just <laughs> love hearing you guys geek out to sci-fi paranormal stuff uh, in your my um, people frozen. <laughs> just keep it coming guys i love it so much you, you are doing such a great job yeah, awesome. i want to thank give you, you another free so. program yeah. Well, right? yeah, thank you yeah, thank, thank you amanda thanks thanks years. yeah thanks <laughs> thank you guys you got it now i, I want to say this to the audience okay this is a very rare case because what i don't want is i don't want yeah. women listening to this who have not worked out for 20 years, who have not trained that consistently, who don't have that type of development, so, yeah, and say, bail. oh, I better not deadlift. I better not squat. I don't want to get that just all of a sudden happen. huge yeah. old back. That's not at all what happens for a vast majority of people. She's in a position that she's in because she's trained for so long, so consistently, mm -hmm. and you heard her. I'm very satisfied with where I'm at. I just don't want to grow my back anymore. When you get to that place, if you get to that place, which most people don't get to, mm -hmm. You're in a wonderful position where you could just maintain certain things. The workouts are easier in certain ways, and now you're just kind of maintaining and shaping and sculpting the body. Yeah, it's just at that level where she can really like hyper focus and fine tune like exactly what she wants at this point. So it makes sense, you know, the advice that we're giving her. But yeah, not to your average. Person. She did touch on something that I think is important to uh, reiterate too, is because it's something that uh, Katrina struggles with this because Katrina has kind of broad shoulders and broad hips. And one of the things that she hates is that when she starts to put on a little bit of body fat, she feels like it really, mm -hmm. it, it really exacerbates that. And so one of the things that I'm always reminding her that it's like, listen, it's not the deadlifts. It's not the back exercises that are making your back feel that way. It's the body fat. When we lean that down, tell me what your back looks like and then decide, you know? So, and she kind of already kind of started she to piece it. That too. Yeah. Started to figure that out. And I just want to highlight that because we all store body fat differently, right? Even though there's like general truths that where men or women yeah. tend to hold body fat, we're all still individuals and we all tend to store and we all have different anatomical structures. Mm -hmm. Katrina has broader shoulders anatomically. And so when she puts on a little bit of extra body fat, it looks, it looks wider. It looks, <laughs> You know, on, on that note, uh, high-level female athletes that perform really well, especially at uh, track and field sports and basketball and, and you know, those types of things, they tend to store body fat a little bit more in the midsection, um, and they tend to have um, a little bit more narrow hips, wider waist, uh, because that's better for athletic performance. So if you're a high-level female athlete... This is this tends to be more of an issue than the average you know average person. Yeah, I think that's why it's important to note that because sometimes we just we assume it's these exercises that yes. are making us this way. So genetics. Like, yeah, your genetics just tend to store body fat in those areas, and I always like to challenge my clients. Hey, let's let's lean down first so we mm -hmm. can really assess what your body looks like and and tell me if that's if you think it's your back is too big or it's just that just happens to be where you store body fat and you don't like totally. that look. Our next caller is Mark from New York. Mark, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. This is awesome. Can't believe I'm talking to you guys. All right. Um, so I just want to start off. I'll start off with a question and then uh, go into some background. Um, so my question is, if you put in the work consistently um, over a long period of time, should everyone be able to lift, say, two plates for bench, three plates for squat, and four plates for deadlift? Um, just some background on me. Um, I've been lifting for six years now and I'm finishing up the RGB progression. Um, and I do a MAPS prime warm up. Um, I've gained a considerable, considerable amount of muscle and really do like my physique, but I feel like, not, I feel like I still am lifting the same weight I was about five years ago. Um, for reference is about 185 for squat, 155 for bench, 225 for deadlift. I have tried to increase the weight on the lifts, but even, you know, a five to 10 pound increase causes my form to break down and me to start twisting and breaking down form. Um, I am consistent with the workouts and nutrition and sleep. 
Um, I just feel with that consistency, I should be stronger and lifting more weight than I am. Um, I always hear you guys talk about how strength is such a great indicator of progress. And I was just wondering if I'm missing anything or, um, and what your guys' thoughts are. All right. Let me, let me answer the first part about benching two plates, squatting three plates, and deadlifting four plates. That's true for girls. Uh, for guys that should yeah, be. Sal, no, I'm just, Sal still can't do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Listen, Mark, there is no standard, okay, when it comes to strength, uh, how much you should lift and how much you shouldn't lift. So I want to address that first because everybody's very different. Um, and if I use the same – if I use this – let me put it this way. If I use the top powerlifting female competitor standards for lifting, I'd be very disappointed in myself after 30 years of, of working out. Just so you don't want to do that. It's just not fair to yourself. Now, the second part, I'm a little confused because you said you've gained a considerable amount of muscle, but your strength is the same. So what do you mean by that? Like how much muscle have you gained? Have you gotten leaner? Is your body weight a lot lighter? Like I need more details in, in, to make sense of this. Yeah. So I was about a year ago now, I was 140 pounds under 10% body fat. I was just, you know, did a lot of cardio, really obsessed with being lean. I went on, I bulked through most of the RGV progression, um, eating about 2,700 calories. And I, so over that nine month process, I gained about 30 pounds. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah. And you know, I look in the mirror, I compare myself to pictures from a year ago. I took pictures every few weeks and, you know, I, it's not, I could tell it's not, it's not all fat just by looking at the pictures. Um, and I was just curious, like how that works or, and if I'm missing something on the strength side, Do you, did you get a body fat test or are you just judging off pictures? I, I, I mean, I can tell by the way he looks, you I don't mean, look like, yeah, that. He, yeah. You, I can tell right now, but I swear you look in the, in your video. You yeah. Know. You don't look like you went to 20% body fat. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, but, do you, I, but do, did you test body fat just by any chance so we can know how much lean body mass you actually gained? I did not know. Okay. Yeah. It's, that's interesting. So you gained 30 pounds, a decent amount of muscle, but your strength is identical. Does your form feel different? Do you feel more under control? Are there any other changes in your workout performance? Um, I mean, I've, I have improved my squat depth just by doing, um, the maps prime and going through that and doing that before the workouts. So I could say that, I mean, my lifts have improved in that regard with more range of motion on the squat. Okay. Um, how did you but, feel during um, MAPS Anabolic in like phase one, for instance? Like, did you feel any strength gains in, in that sort of a protocol where you dropped your reps down significantly? That was the most I've ever increased uh, the weight. I did go up to, um, to 200 for squat, which is the most I had ever done. Uh -huh. During that, doing about, you know, like two to three reps. Okay. So and yeah. I, I do want to uh, be clear here. If you're using the same weight, but you're going, say, five inches deeper on your squat with more control, you're stronger. Not yeah. only that, too. For sure. Also, if he's handling more volume in the workout than what he was right. uh, yeah. two years ago, too, that's stronger. Right. Sometimes we always measure strength by the, the, the PRs. Plates. Yeah. You know, like, I, oh, I, I this is the most I've ever deadlifted or squat, but, but then also, but I'm not counting that I'm doing three more sets of deadlifting in a, in a routine that I have ever done before, or I'm, you know, the, if your volume is increased also, right. And, so there's, there's other factors that I think that are at play yeah. here. And especially if you have something as objective as looking at a picture from before and after, and you feel it, you know, you have put on muscle and you look better. It sounds like you're doing really good, man. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like now you might want to just shift your focus a little bit more on those big compound lifts and like really dive into that and yeah, like a maps the power lifting yes, absolutely. Um, direction for you because I guarantee like if, if that's all working out for you, your body's substantially changing, transforming. Uh, now, if that's, a, if that's an indicator, if that's a metric that you're going to seek, you just focus on that for a while and you're going to, you're going to see a lot of strength gains. Yeah. I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Justin was like, you know, what would be great for you since you've gone through the RGB is now's a good time to mess with maps totally. power lift. Totally. So go on a MAPS power lift routine, and I guarantee you run through that program, you will come back with all those numbers will have gone up. Yeah, we'll send that to you and, and if you don't have it. But yeah, if, if let's say you handle the same weight, but you're more stable, or your range of motion increases, or you can slow the rep down, yeah. or you can lift it more explosively, um, or you can handle more sets and not lighten the load, mm -hmm. um, or you can rest less in between sets and hit, hit, handle the same load, like all of that are improvements in strength. Or progress. Yeah, it's not just I added weight to the bar. All of, you know, more volume, all that stuff shows that your strength um, has improved. So it's not always just the amount of weight, especially when, consider this too, um, you're you're going through different programs. 
Each one is is different, right? Maps Anabolic is very different from Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic is very different. Each one has different phases within them. So, you know, phase one for Maps Anabolic to phase three, you, you can't look at the weight on the bar. And one of them, you're doing, you know, you're resting three, four minutes, you're doing really low reps. And the other phase, you're doing supersets with lighter weight and more volume. So you don't want to necessarily compare it that way. You want to compare it kind of apples to apples. So a more fair comparison would be everything's identical, and then is the weight going up. Um, the form is identical. The depth is identical. The volume is identical. Um, then is the weight going up. That would be a little bit more of a fair uh, type comparison. Mark, how old are you right now? I am 23. Oh, yeah. And you're, you're bro, you're still growing too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got, and it's very normal. To, I mean, you've been lifting consistently for six years. So it, when I think back to my entire lifting career, you're going to go through phases of your life where you, you kind of plateau PR wise on some of these lifts. I mean, I mean, I've been in, I've been hovering around the same deadlift squat and bench for a very long time. I mean, so, and I can't get hung up all the time. Like I'm, I, I will not always keep getting stronger in those lifts. In fact, I, I tend to go way back down and then I have to work my way back up yeah. just to getting back to what, what my some of my PRs were in my late 20s in those some of those lifts. And so I've kind of reached where where my max potential strength is. Doesn't mean that I can't get a little bit stronger, but that's kind of what my body is capable of doing that that kind of, you know, I think I've the max bench. I think it was at three, three fifty at one point. My my squat was around four twenty. My deadlift was five fifty. Those are kind of my max. numbers. I'm not at any of those numbers right now because I'm not lifting at the same volume and consistency as what I was just four or five years ago. And if I were to really get after it. It would be, I'd be lucky just to get back up to those numbers and it, and then stay consistent after that for another four or five years. Maybe I get another five pounds or 10 pounds out in some of those things. So, you know, at one point when you've been consistently lifting for a long time, you start to get closer and closer to some of your, your, your probably your max numbers. Yeah, another thing to consider too, Mark, is um, that when you look at, this isn't true for everybody, but generally speaking, um, people's strength peaks when they lift consistently in like their mid-30s. Uh, that's just across the board, which is very interesting. I've been working out. That's where I hit my peak. Same here. I, I worked out since I was 14 consistently, and the the strongest I ever was was about you know 34, 35, 31, it, 32 for me was my it, peak. Yeah, and if you look at um, like you know com competitive numbers, natural competitions, drug tested, all that stuff, you see people peaking strength wise. Now I'm not talking about athletic performance. That tends to be much younger, but that encompasses things like agility and that kind of stuff. But just raw strength. Men tend to peak in their 30s, sometimes 40s. So that's when people are hitting their, their strongest lifts. And this is after years and years and years of lifting. So my, in other words, I'm telling you, you got a long ways to go. So don't freak out. Don't worry. Yeah, I think you're doing great, dude. Same. Awesome. I mean, that's good to hear. I, I had no idea that, you know, strength peaks that late. So, uh, I mean, that's encouraging. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if I progress onto MAPS Powerlift, um, so I did bulk through most of the RGB progression. And I've kind of been at maintenance, um, just, you know, being the summer, didn't want to keep bulking. Um, and it's a lot of food. Um, what would you recommend going into that program with nutrition wise? I, I like maintenance. That's mm -hmm. maybe a slight bulk, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe like a hundred, 200 above maintenance, just enough to fuel any strength gains. You're not going to see like huge weight gains on, on that, but you should see huge strength. Be gains. Because you don't want to be a deficit just because if your goal is to try and increase strength, like you yeah. want to give your body adequate energy, but that's about it. Well, that's actually how I would, that's how I would let your, your calories be dictated is how you feel going into each workout. So, so let's say you, you start the program <clears throat> And uh, you you get into week two or three, and you see maybe a dip in strength. I the very first place I would look at is my nutrition. Yeah, I would go like, oh man, maybe I'm not giving myself enough adequate calories or protein or enough carbohydrates before my workout. Yeah. So just fuel your workouts. So uh, make sure that if you do not feel like you're either maintaining strength or gaining strength through the program, that you give yourself adequate calories to make sure that the you feel good in your workouts. That's how I would dictate whether I'm in a bulk of maintenance or whatever, but like Justin said, being in a deficit in a strength-based program, you're not going to see very much strength gains if you're in a deficit. So I definitely wouldn't be in a deficit. I'd be in a maintenance slight surplus, like Sal was saying. And the way I would dictate that would be based off of my performance in my workouts. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Awesome guys. That sounds like a game plan. And I just want to thank you again. I mean, your podcast has really helped me create a fitness plan that fits in nicely. Like I was in college, so I had all the time in the world, but now creating a plan that work fits in nicely in that morning window before work. So thank you guys. Yeah. Good awesome. for you, man. Right Thanks on. Mark. All right. Thank you. 
Yeah, you know, uh, back to that statistic that I mentioned, I remember as a kid, you you hear all the time that a man's performance, right, uh, peaks in their late teens, early 20s, athletics and sports and all that stuff. But when it comes to just pure strength, it's much later. It's totally different. Like if you're, you're right. But I didn't know that, right? Like, so I thought, oh my God, I'm never going to hit these I swear numbers. You don't really know your body until way later. That's you know, it. Well, that. it's totally like grinding raw lifting strength is so different than like basketball, tennis, swimming, yeah, athletic. which is just lots of agility. And yeah. You can't have joint pain. You got to be able to you know react really quick, which you kind of lose start to lose that as you get older. Yeah, and that's and so, the strength. So that, I mean, in professional sports, you're considered old at 30. Right. Yeah. In in lifting, it's completely opposite. Oh my God. Yeah. In, in the Top lifters are in their early to mid thirties. Well, like some peak, of them in their forties. My peak mm -hmm. was 31, 32 for yep. strength. That was, I mean, that's so far. That's been the best I've ever been in a lift. Was mm -hmm. at that time, was 31, 32. So that was like the best year. So, and most people I know that have been lifting for a long time would say the same thing. It's yeah, it's because it's an incremental, slowly build and uh -huh. build and build. And I even now at forty three, I can hit uh, some of the numbers I hit in my mid. Not all of them, but some of them. And I'm starting now to notice a little bit, but that has more to do with just wear and tear on the body, and it's just not smart for me to train that way. But yeah, it's like when you're 23, when it comes to strength and lifting, you're a baby. Yeah, I think maybe we, not sports, but for lifting, you're. I a baby. think uh, Larry Wheels has ruined it for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I know, just, every 25 year old sees Larry Wheels and goes like, "Why can't I do?" Well, all if he doesn't it? hurt himself, he'll get, keep getting stronger for yeah. the next 10 years. You know, <laughs> yeah, Dude, he's crazy. He's, he's a beast, isn't he? He's only like 25. He's right? a baby. Yeah, he's hella young. Yeah. <laughs> Our next caller is Brian from North Carolina. Brian, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for having me on today. You got it. Uh, I've been a listener for about uh, three years. I'm excited to be here. Right on. All right. Um, yeah, so let me get into it. So I just turned uh, 30. Consider myself to be in you know, pretty good shape, uh, look the way I want to, pain-free. Uh, you know, got a lot of good things going. Um, I was running MAPS anabolic recently, um, and when I got to my deadlifts, I was winded after about like four or five of them. Um you know, I, I generally like only lift weights, not a cardio guy. Um, you know, I work from home now. It's been like that for like the last two years, going some walks during the day. Um, you know, so my question is like, how can I improve my endurance in the gym? Um, you know, while deadlifting, I feel like it's costing me some strength gains since I'm, I'm falling short on my reps. Do you notice this on the other lifts too, or just deadlifts? No, it's just been deadlifts. Um, squats isn't so bad. Um, yeah, just just deadlifts is where it really comes what, out. What, pro what program comes to mind right away? Tell me, you guys are on the same page as I am. Strong. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's strong. That's sure. Strong would be great. The first phase, bro. Know, Work capacity. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. phase. You know, there's another part to your question, endurance. Brian, that you didn't say here on air that you wrote in, and you said that you like to keep your body fat around ten percent or lower. Is that where you're at right now? Yeah, I, that's generally like for like the last like three years, I've been kind of hanging around that number, and I never get it tested. Um, I just have, you know, like visible abs, um, like nutrition's kind of locked in. Okay. Um, so it's generally where I've been at. Well, you could try going, you know, try adding calories too. You know, some, some guys can maintain, you know, nine, 8% body fat and notice no performance drops. But that's the exception, not the Yeah, but rule. he's also he's also he okay, so he's not doing any cardio. He's also got a desk job at home all day right. long. Like Well, I mean, it would be part of the formula, is what I'm saying. I, I, I'm not saying it's the answer, I, but I would say like map strong. I would go on a surplus um, and then see what happens. I know for me, for example, my stamina is just better when I'm like at 11% body fat than when I'm like eight or nine. That 2% makes a big difference for me. Some people, that's not the case, but uh, like I said, that's the exception. Single digit body fat tends to affect uh, performance for some people. So I would go on a little surplus with Map Strong and see what happens. And I don't think you need to add cardio if you do Map Strong. Map Strong. Has got some stamina in there built in, and um, you want to talk about deadlift endurance? There's a lot of stuff in there that'll build that. Yeah, sure. there's two different ways that I would go at it. I, if you were a client of mine and you said like, "Out of my, you know, can I can I build that endurance without adding cardio?" I would I would move you in the strong direction. Just mm -hmm. do that program. That's going to build the work capacity you're looking for without actually doing any cardio. If you said, "I don't, I actually don't mind cardio if you don't mind me doing it," I would say, "Dude, do two 12 to 15 minutes a hit post workout." Uh, after your lifting sessions and watch what that does to your work capacity. I think that in itself would also do it. So you kind of have two different options on how you want to approach it. Both options, though, I would agree with Sal. I would increase calories a little bit because the volume and work workload that's in strong, you could increase calories and still maintain your body fat percentage, and you'll probably see strength gains in that. Oh, I, and I, 
hundred percent. I'd go up three hundred calories. Yeah, and then same thing goes for hit. If you all of a sudden did the other direction that I said, which is start to incorporate hit into your routine post workout for like you know, like I said, twelve fifteen minutes on the stairmaster or sprints or the rower or something after you're lifting, also increase calories and you'll still keep your and maintain your body fat percentage, maybe even go down a little bit. So you kind of have two different options on how you could potentially. Uh, increase your work capacity and it, it really would have to do with which one do you prefer as a client is where I'd, I'd push you yeah and in and, and deadlifts for reps gnarly so mm -hmm. that's just hard for everybody I don't you know don't don't feel too bad about that it's like I rarely go over five reps of deadlifts because it's just it's one of those exercises that just seems Super to work taxing. better yeah but yeah. you could barely run across the street to Starbucks too so <laughs> yeah. let's not let's not use you as an example that's, that's true so I mean I think I think that that's you true. they bring I, it to me though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so let's not use you as an example, or, or yeah. any of us for that matter, for running stuff. But I mean, that's it, literally, it, it comes down to what you like to do. And yeah. if you really like, you know, strength training, you dig the lifting weights part, you could totally build a cardiovascular endurance. That's one of the things I think that we always are trying to preach on here because people think we're anti cardio. It's like, yeah. no, you do a program like strong, like the very first phase. You got 20 reps of deadlifts. The bro. work sessions are going to, yeah. and then you have work sessions on the opposing days, which are like speed ladder drills and things like that. Like you're going to build some cardiovascular endurance just by following a, a weight, especially for the deadlift. Yeah, yeah, and it's translatable, and so I think that's why we first, you know, highlight the work capacity part of it because you're loaded and you're trying to maintain, you know, good form and technique and everything while being in a state of fatigue. And so uh, to train that way translates a lot better towards a goal. Of, of, of being better, having better stamina while you're lifting weights versus just adding in running at the end of your workouts, which will help, but it's not exactly as translatable. Right. And I think for me, it's like I'm comparing, you know, back before, you know, like 2019, I was hitting the gym. Like, I feel like I didn't have this issue. Now it's been three years later. I've been working from home more, I'm, you know, three years older. Um, so I was still trying to figure out. And uh, the other thing is, so my calories are at like 2,700 now. I can just bump that up to 3,000. Yeah, I would go 300. That, that sounds like a, a good place to go. But then from there, feel it out. See if you need more. You're you're okay. you're also, you said you're 30, right? Is that what you said you're at? Yep. This is about the age where I hit, where I started doing this thing where occasionally what I, because I'm not a big, obviously, runner or, or cardio guy either, but I also don't want to, uh, allow myself to get so far the other direction that I can't run a mile. Right. So what I would right. do is like, I don't know, every, every couple months, if I notice, like I feel that way, like you're, you're kind of explaining, I would get on the treadmill and just see what I can get, get my mile time just to see where it's at. And I always like to keep it in a range that I think is good. So I want to be able to do sub eight minutes always. Like it's just, to me, that's not like a super fast mile time, but it's also, that's pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially now I'm 40 something years old. So when you, I started enough that. to catch your kids. Yeah, that's right. It's enough to catch your park. kids or run away from somebody. <laughs> like, that's kind of my, my thought processes. And it, it, Miles, only eight minutes. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I'm not a big cardio guy, but, and I'll probably never have to run more than a mile at one time. So that's kind of my idea of like, okay, <laughs> I'm still relatively fit enough to get after it for one mile. And so I like to use that as like how cardiovascularly fit am I at the time? And so you have a baseline. I think it's a great age to do that. So it, it, since you're feeling that way, get on the treadmill, run your mile, see where your mile time is, and then let that be kind of your baseline of, of, of judging where your, your cardiovascular endurance is at. Okay. Yeah, that no, sounds good. All right, man. We're going to send you map strong if you don't got that. All right, Brian? All right, I don't. I appreciate it. It was great, great being on, man. You guys are great. Thanks, awesome. man. Nice beard, by Sweet. the way. Very healthy. I yeah. appreciate it. Small beard. Yeah. You got it. Not tiny. <laughs> yeah. just tiny, small. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. You know, uh, could you imagine running from something scary for a mile? <laughs> <laughs> you said you want to be able to do that for a mile. That's a long time to be running yeah. for some, some yeah. scary shit, Lots bro. Of pulled that's why. That's, after that's, about a quarter mile, I'd be like, ah, yeah. I think I'm just going to die. I don't that's why, running. that's why I want to yeah. be able to do it. I'm like, yeah. you know, there's not many times you'll have to run for more than a mile. Really? Let's be honest here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're running for more than a mile, like you, you're, there's something bad going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You didn't get away. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you don't yeah. say you didn't get away. That's so. hilarious. Yeah. I like the metric system. I go for a kilometer. The miles too long for me. <laughs> no, but you know, it, it, you know, his question is, uh, it's a good one. I think also something else that's probably playing a role is just that he's working from home. That, yes. You know, yeah. sitting all day. You know, I remember when uh, when they first came out with the body bug was a was like a breakthrough piece of you know fitness equipment or you know metric I guess measurer. And I remember 
looking at my clients' charts, and then I really realized, like, oh my god, you are you move for one hour a day. Yeah. The rest of the day you do nothing. Yeah. So no wonder your calorie burn is so low or you yeah. feel the way you do, even though you work out every day. Well, whatever you do the most throughout your day is what your body prioritizes. Yeah. Well, or so what it blew sitting. me away with that that tech was I'd see a, a day they train with me where we not only did a weightlifting session, they also did a half hour, hour cardio. And then they'd have a Saturday yeah. that they burned way more yeah, calories. Doing yard work or something. Yeah, yeah and I they know. Would, just went to the mall, went shopping, they, they cleaned house. They just And I was like, whoa, like... So it is it, you, and I remember this transition in my life when I went from being a a full time personal trainer who was you know training eight ten clients every day six days a week to all of a sudden being this guy who was running a a, a cannabis club where I was sitting at a desk and I at the beginning had no no clients no customers and I just sat for eight hours out of my day it was a huge transition oh, for me yeah. to go through that because i w quickly went from the guy who could never eat enough calories to keep up with his burn and his activity level to quickly being the guy that was just piling and it was i bet it fooled you at first it did but, i've, oh, I've wow, shared it if you listen long enough on the podcast i've actually shared this story before uh but i when i first told you guys that like i had this realization like oh i'm fat like I've never felt yeah. fat before in my life because I could never put on weight for all of my 20s. And when I first started to put on weight, I was so, I cared so much about the scale that I didn't realize that it was mostly body fat that I was putting on. I was just like, oh, I'm filling out my shirts. Oh, the yeah. scale's going up. It was like the first time over 200 pounds. And then I remember laying on my yeah. side in bed and scratching my side and like filling a belly for the first time <laughs> in my life. I went, oh my God, like I've never, never put on that kind of weight. So yeah, it's a, it's a major transition when you go from being somebody who's just, you know, has a, a relatively you active- people don't realize it. Yeah, active job, how, how much of a difference that makes. Our next caller is Brett from Minnesota. Brett, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good. I just want to say thank you guys, as everyone does, and that uh, I respect the grind you guys are on to put out, you know, newish content every day. Uh, my question is about two things. The first one is um, the supplementation of EAAs, or just like you know, all the amino acids, or the nine main ones, um, and the supplementation of organ meats for the EAAs. Um, I've listened to what you guys have to say about whether or not they're useful or not useful and how they're only useful if you're not hitting your protein targets. Um, but for me, um, I'm 6'6", 245 pounds, and I only eat about three meals a day between with my work schedule um, and try not to eat after dinner time. So while adhering to proper pro protein absorption methods, you know, you can't eat more than, you know, maybe 40 to 60 grams of protein in a meal, three meals a day. That's about, you know, 150 to 180 grams of protein. So would this be an opportunity that supplementing for amino acids would be helpful because I'm not getting to, you know, the, about the 0.8, which would be about 200 to 222 grams of protein, um, for me. Yeah. Um, so good question. If Address the protein absorption first. Yeah. Yeah. You can take, you can eat more than that. Um, that's you, eat a hundred, you can eat a hundred grams in one sitting, bro. As long as you can digest oh, okay. it. Yeah. yeah. As long as you can digest it, it doesn't affect your digestion negatively. You can have more protein at one sitting. So that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a myth. Um, so it depends on digestion more than anything. Big guy like you, you could probably eat 80 grams of protein, um, at a sitting and you'd probably be fine. So I'd mess around with that a little bit. If you're hitting about 170 grams or so, uh, of protein, you're probably okay. You, you probably don't need essential amino acids. Now, you could test it out. You could supplement with them and see if you notice a difference. But the studies show it's like mm, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. The one gram per pound of body weight, that's really a number that uh, you know supplement companies push out. It's easier to measure. It's you know People don't have to do math. They could just say, I weigh this much, eat this much. And if I miss it a little bit, I'm going to hit, I'm still going to hit the number that the studies show. Um, so, I, I mean... I'd say this is hit or miss. You're probably okay, but you can mess around with it a little bit um, and see how that feels for you. I, now, go ahead. I, I want to know uh, what's your what's your favorite source of protein? Are you are you a big meat eater? Yeah, we eat. I, I'm a Midwest eater, and we eat. You know, we do half cow a year between you know our family of four, so we do like a lot of red meat and sometimes chicken, but it's pretty much whey protein and red meat. So, and eggs. I eat a lot of eggs too. Oh, I love. That. I mean, high quality. Yeah, dude. So literally, just do this when you when you eat your meals. Uh, instead of eating probably eight ounces of steak like you probably do, eat ten to twelve. 
So bump the ounces up of of your servings of meat every time you eat meat. I mean, this is how I eat. I mean, you you and I are almost exact same. I'm two thirty five, two forty. So we're you're a little bit taller than I am, but we're about similar similar weight. And I ha- and I'm only eating about three meals a day right now. And so in order for me to hit my protein take, I'll sit. Sometimes I'll I mean I'll put a whole pound of meat down in one sitting. So and it, and that's mm. totally fine on my dishes. Now what I can't do, and so and pay attention to this because you might be like me with this, is I can't do that all in like protein powder. If I have a hundred grams of pro like dairy or like that will kind of met like then I'll be on the toilet right afterwards. But like meat yeah. meat and rice or meat eggs and rice like a combo like that, man I could I could crush a hundred grams of protein easily in one meal with that combo. I did it last night. Did it you did it night morning before so. That's kind of a go-to staple for me is, and I, I think I just recently shared this as a as a fitness tip where I'll I'll make a big meat type of dinner the other just uh, night before last I did a huge I did three pounds of bison and rice all mixed together and then that was my dinner and then morning I had the exact same thing but then I just cracked two over easy eggs on top of that so literally having yeah. like a 80, 90 gram breakfast of protein uh, and that sits really well with me i love that so now the the only caveat would be if if you're if you the extra 3 ounces of meat is adding you know more calories than you want from the additional maybe fat that comes from the steak in which case um, I would cut your carbs down to make up the difference if that's what you, if that's your goal or choose a leaner meat or choose, choose a leaner meat. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's great advice. I mean, you could always add more shakes too. you know, the thing about essential amino acid supplements, it's always very interesting to me because you could just take a 10, literally 10 grams of whey protein will give you more essential amino acids than essential amino acid supplements or pills. If you do the math and you look at the two, it's like six grams of uh, whey protein is more typically than essential amino acids and cheaper. It costs less money. Yeah. I know the one one thing that got me on a, a rabbit hole was I also listened to one of your guys' friends who I actually found Sal on, who's Ben Greenfield. Yeah. And he's really huge on amino acids. And he's like, amino acid with whey protein is like the way to do it. So now I'm like deciding, I'm like, mind pump. Ben Greenfield, well, let's ask him to see what they <laughs> well, say. Hey, how, how about this? We don't sell an amino acid. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's fair. Okay. That's so, fair. Okay. Okay. And on top of that, in Ben's defense, okay, because I love Ben, uh, if you've ever seen that guy's routine, what he does, and if you were – It's if, insane. Yes. His, his activity <laughs> level is nothing I, – I would think that – the three of us in this room are are probably closer to your lifestyle or the average person's lifestyle. Ben Greenfield, is, Ben Greenfield is an anomaly. <laughs> yeah. I, ben Greenfield is one a, by himself in a category. Like I've never met he, of all of our friends. There's not another friend I have like him as far as like the way that guy trains rigorously all the time, and a lot of it is cardiovascular. So he's running all the time and doing physical stuff. Like okay. If I had that much activity in my day, maybe I would consider supplementing with something like that in addition because he'll do some times where he goes on a run for an hour and then an hour or two later, he's lifting weights or doing or doing archery or something else. Like, okay, someone who's got that much physical activity on a regular basis makes a little more sense to play with something like that. Right, I could see that being yeah. more beneficial. Guys like me and the guys in this room and probably you, not so much. Yeah, but I mean, again, the studies are very clear on this. I mean, I'll supplement with protein or I've even supplemented with essential amino acids only when my protein intake is low. But if it's high, sure. it, makes no, it makes no difference. It's like you're throwing, you know, it's like you're in a pool and you're throwing water on yourself. It doesn't make any, you're not going to get any more wet. You're already in the pool. So it doesn't, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make a difference unless – you're having trouble hitting those targets. But I mean, you know, guy your size, if you hit 170, 180 grams, you're probably you're probably hitting enough. And if you want to add essential amino acids, you can literally like I said, you could do 10 grams of whey protein yeah. instead of six essential amino acid pills and you'll get more essential essential amino acids from the 10 grams of whey protein, which is like a tiny you know, it's a sliver of a scoop. Which is why the move for me, for you, is literally bump every yeah. m- meat meal two ounces. We're always going to go you, natural. Whole you go, you bump okay. every meat meal by two ounces and no whey protein, no supplement pill is yeah. going to trump that. Now, there was a second part to your question I think we might have missed. If you wouldn't mind re-asking that again. Yeah, I want to throw in one little quick closing thing. First of all, uh, you said that you, you kind of referenced the podcast you put out like a few days ago. 
um, about just meals that you guys eat that you think are really awesome. I listen to that and that is super awesome. And I eat most of the things on that list. So I, I think that's really cool. Um, and I would kind of like to see one of those for supplements to what you guys are actually using every day. I know you've said ones that are good to use, ones that you could use, but what are you actually using every day that you think is good for longevity? I like that. Um, I like that for a single topic. Yeah. You really yeah. want to know what I take so, every day? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a huge dis- hey, there's a huge discrepancy between the four of us. And We're there's, all a, very there's different. what yeah. I recommend, and then there's the advice I don't take yeah, that I, I do for myself. Very. That's yeah. okay. That's, that's, a good, I, so, that's a good episode. That's a good one. And then a second one, too. And this, I got this idea from Ben Greenfield. He did a thing where he went through his whole routine, which was absolutely insane. It took him two hours to talk through it. And then one of the questions they asked him was, what does your wife do? And she doesn't do anything. So I think it'd be cool to hear what your guys' wives do, because I know you talk about, you know, them working out using your programs and the whole thing. So I think not only you guys, but what your wives are actually soaking up from what you guys are doing too, would be cool. Um, I, I think, my second question. I think oh, go ahead. Good no, no, no. I was just, I, I agree. I think those, those are uh, good episodes. that I think a lot of people would gain value from, because I th- actually think that our wives and us are pretty fucking normal. But yet, okay. we're all a little bit different as far as how we We supplement. have exceptional wives. I mean, could you imagine being married to us? How annoying that would be? <laughs> I mean, let's be real. I can imagine. Yeah. And then the last question. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So you guys talk a lot about uh, natural living, ancestral health, and the whole thing, but you guys don't at all, at, or I've kind of researched and haven't found any of you guys talking about organ meat supplements. Um, it's really clear that before we lived in civilized societies, we would eat organs first before we ate muscle meat. We would give the organs to our women first and we would eat them, you know, above anything else we could eat. But a lot of people don't supplement with them. I think a lot of the upper echelon health people talk about supplementing with, you know, liver, heart, whatever. Um, But I haven't heard that from you guys. So what do you think about organ meat supplements? Why don't you talk about them? Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we have. We've yeah. brought them up, and uh, we actually work with we a company a called uh, Paleo Valley, and they have an organ complex oh. supplement um, that I think is really good, and, and I've recommended them. Organ meats are very interesting. Uh, number one, they're so nutrient-dense. They're the most nutrient-dense meat. First off, animal meat in general is very nutrient-dense, but you go down to organ meats, they're so nutrient-dense, you can actually run the risk of overdosing yourself mm-hmm. on things like iron uh, from mm. eating like lots of liver, for example. That's how, that's how dense they are. So it's, a, it's nature's literal multivitamin, um, very, very potent. Here's the bad part about them. They don't taste good. And we're talking to the general public and I could tell people eat kidneys, eat heart, eat spleen, eat liver. And no one is going to listen to me. I've never had a client (laughs) like hear me say that and then go home cook up organ meats and be like, this is amazing and I love it. Nobody likes them. They don't taste good. Well, there's also a higher, they are incredible. There's also hierarchy, right? Like if, uh, if I'm in, I would say 90% of my clients I ever trained uh, under consume protein, same thing that you're struggling with right now. And so uh, if as a, as a coach, I'm going to focus on helping you, giving you some basic advice like I just gave you, bumping your meat by two, two ounces, and that's going to become more beneficial than me telling you, Hey, take this organ supplement. That's really what it. So we always try and focus on the. I think the hierarchy it's more of sustainable. Things. Yeah, but I tell you what. I mean, I I took just some liver pills the other day. I see Sal take them all the time. So we utilize things like that. We've also mm. had episodes where we told people to take. Uh, I know Sal talked about this a long time. We actually were on like an organ meat talk kick a long time ago. We mm-hmm. actually talked about it a lot early on in the early days of Mind Pump, and we were giving oh. tips of how. Sal would, he would freeze like little one ounce chunks of organ meat and then mix it in with like his, his regular, like, yeah. So I'd do like ground beef. Yeah. Yeah, So if I did like a, like, you know, 10 ounces of ground beef, I'd put like an ounce of ground liver and kind of blend it in there and sneak it in and you can't really taste it and the kids would eat it type of deal. Um, but yeah, no, we're big fans of organ meat, you know, in the back in the day when a child this before supplements or multivitamins existed, you know, if a guy, if a kid came in, and they had, you know, displayed low vitamin D or iron, or if a woman was anemic. Before we had supplements, doctors would would prescribe eating liver or cod liver oil. You know, kids used to take cod liver oil. They said like force it down kids' throats. And in fact, if you watch old old cartoons, you'd see like kids like fighting their mom, and they're trying to force feed them a spoon of something. It's cod liver oil that they would give their mm. kids. But again, the, the downside is it tastes. <laughs> it's not tasty. Right. So, but they're amazing. They're definitely amazing. But now supplements exist. So if you have a nutrient deficiency, I mean, you, you can technically, 
you know, uh, you could satisfy that deficiency with a multivitamin or a specific supplement. But I, I'm a I'm a big fan of. I, I want to make it clear too, like we this is none of this is new science. Like we've known this for a very long time. The value yeah. of organ meats and and amino acids, and why you see it as such a high talking point from uh, so many people in the, this industry is because they're they're normally peddling they're a supplement. Selling. They're yeah. selling a supplement, and that's mm, and so that's fair. it is. It's the truth. It's a, and, there, and there's decent margins still left in that because there's not a lot of margins in, in a lot of supplements. And so, you know, to me, if, if somebody is, is talking to you about that, the very first thing that I'm going to ask is like, do they have, do they sell a supplement that is related to that? And, and that right away should give you this red flag of why they talk about it so much. We talk about it. But we don't make a we don't I mean we're we're sponsored by a company like Paleo Valley, but we make if we sell a ten thousand organ complex versus one, it doesn't change the way we get paid advertising for their company. So we don't push it and talk about it that much because it's not on the hierarchy of things that we can help people with. Doesn't mean that we don't believe in it or else we wouldn't be connected hey, to well, it. Well, for the people that it helps, it helps a lot. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. That's so. right. But that you're talking about a very small percentage of people when I think yeah. of all the things that I'm going to address and drill home to them, like let's get all these other things in order and then we can talk about some other things that can also mm, potentially totally. benefit you. Um and so you know, I, I would always question that first is when I hear advice like that and then they also are selling that supplements like, OK, they're going to drill that home so much harder because, of course, they make money off of it. Yeah. And so now that being said, I give my kids organ complex. That's the supplement that I give them uh, most often. Uh, it's got those, those great nutrients that I know that their bodies uh, will need because they're growing. And my kids uh, hate organ meats. I have to sneak it in if I give yeah. them any. Um, getting them to eat actual liver, it's like uh, it's worse than pulling teeth. And uh, I'd rather I'd rather not create that bad relationship with food by forcing them. So I try to sneak it in, and I'll give them you know organ complex from Paleo Valley. It's very easy to take, just a few capsules. So sweet, that's awesome. Thank you guys. All right, man. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to your your daily routines and and what your wives are doing too. I awesome. appreciate it, Brett. Right, Brett. Get back to playing golf. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <bye. laughs> Looks like he's playing golf right now, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's it's a um, you know good question, good discussion, and you know you you hit the nail on the head, Adam, and I do want to state it differently that when there's a product to be sold, you're going to get a disproportionate amount of information directed towards that product, and it's going to create the illusion or the perception mm -hmm. that that is more important because you're getting so much information regarding that particular thing. Not saying it's not important to right. look at essential amino acids, but it's done intentionally. It's just it's just they're selling it so there's going to be more content, more blogs, more podcasts, more information directed toward this and so the the consumer the, the perception they get is, "Oh my god, essential amino acids are way more important than yeah. looking at my calories or hitting my protein targets." Listen, one of one of the things that the audience probably has no idea about that we talk about off air um, and we have many, many times is creating our own supplement line. Obviously, we have a large enough audience that that would be a, a multi-million dollar side of the business if we chose to do that. One of the reasons why we haven't, aside from the margins being terrible and all the other bullshit that comes with it, is because it could potentially move our message. Then it's hard if you have a a major revenue stream that is coming from that yeah. to not give it attention. Yeah. You would be a poor business person then right. if you didn't. Right. So if we if we can find ways for us to monetize this business without having to peddle supplements, it doesn't steer our conversation around that topic all the time. Otherwise, it would be hard for us not to do that. You know what it reminds me of? It's like um, when statins were invented, they very effectively lowered total cholesterol numbers. And so what was the focus being placed on in, the, in, in medicine? It was cholesterol, total mm -hmm. cholesterol. Got to get that low. And it was almost like they ignored all these other – because when you look at all the, all the metrics, that's what gives you the clear picture. It's not just total cholesterol. But now we have a medicine that can lower it. For 100%, we could lower your cholesterol. So what was the message centered around, right? It was centered around that. And it gave the perception that this is the most important thing that I should do. And all these other things don't matter as much because all the information was directed that way. And that's what ends up happening with – our space because of things like supplements and monetization. Well, there's just so many things to cover. And so it, you, at, at a certain point, like you're going to get um, different motivations from different 
um, platforms, different people, yep. you know, representing certain things. Like there's so many avenues of health and fitness to focus on. And our, we choose to, to focus on the biggest movers specifically. And yes, the, you know, you can make arguments for a lot of these supplements that help in certain instances and situations and, and certain types of people that would massively benefit. But is that the majority? Yeah. I, I also try and put myself back in the shoes of what of being a 17 to 21 year old kid who didn't really have the the expendable budget that I have today, and I try and th give advice from that perspective versus me today. Because yeah, if you looked at Sal's supplement bag, he probably walks around with a thousand dollars worth of supplements yeah. all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you also have the disposable income to play with those yeah. things. Yep. If you were struggling and and gas prices going up and it was cutting into your weekly budget and your paycheck to paycheck. You wouldn't be taking all those supplements. No. That, that that money would be going to those things, and so that matters too. It's like when I'm talking to somebody, it's like, okay, if you if you have three to five hundred dollars to throw away every month, then why not play with all these supplements? Just have sure. fun. They're not going to hurt you. They are beneficial. Then have fun with them. Add them to your routine. But other, if not, I'm I'm going to first give you advice on the big rocks, yeah. the big it, movers it, it, first. It's also this. Like as a kid, I remember getting advice from someone. It was the right advice, and he told me. Lift full body three days a week. Eat a lot of chicken. Eat a lot of tuna fish. Eat a lot of rice. Get good sleep. And I'm like, ah, he's not telling me the real stuff. Like, had he told me take this pill, yeah, it's this cool supplement, costs a hundred dollars a bottle. I would have been right on it. Yeah, you know. So it's just, uh, it's just one of those things that we got to constantly battle. Look, if you like our information, uh, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with building muscle, burning body fat, getting a better squat. We even have guides for personal trainers. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.